What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it! Ladies and gentlemen, buenas tardes and welcome to the Play vs. Spring 2021 CIF Esports Initiative Championship presented by Omen, NVIDIA, HyperX, and United States Marine Corps. I'm going to be guiding you to the, through today's broadcast. My name is Rafa, and I got my co-caster Smax, also known as Mr. Monkey D himself as well. <laughs> if you can give a quick demonstration to the class, Smax. Oh, yeah. Got to do the dance. Monkey D dance. Imagine me like glowing <laughs> rainbow colors for that, uh, for the emote right there. Unfortunately, I yes. can't do that physically, but I can do the dance here for us, Rafa. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun stream today. Smacks, if you were glowing rainbow colors, I, I I would be a fan, but also I would be very concerned and I would have to take <laughs> you to the hospital if that were the case. Yeah. But that's okay. That's okay, Smacks, because today we have an, an exciting finals match the California state championships finals for today's uh match here we have returning champions in sunny hills lancers from sunny hills high school taking on la quinta pom de terre which for anyone that uh is very fluent in french or knows their french uh would say that oh this is the fruit of the earth or um in this case if you want to be super literal translation uh earth apples which you know, I from from what our production has told us, this is maybe the third or fourth name change that this roster has gone through uh, in recent time. But I mean, they they've gone on quite a win streak, completely undefeated in the regular season, but now in the playoffs round, going head to head against the prior championship winners and defending champions in Sunny Hills, right here, Smacks. Yeah, and uh, all of your all of your fun facts about French potatoes off screen has given me a lot of insight on how I'm expecting this team to play out as well. And they also have a really fun name on their team, NA Wood Player, which is absolutely hysterical. Uh, if Wood was a rank that you could achieve in League of Legends, then this person would be the best at it. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm very excited for that, and I'm very excited to see some more high school League of Legends today, Rafa. It's gonna be it's gonna be another great best of three. We've already seen two of them go the distance all the way to game three back to back. So I'm expecting another one of those today. Yeah, I mean, I'm always down for exciting League of Legends action. And from the past two broadcast finals that we've had, from yesterday's Alabama finals, and then to the very first finals we had back on Thursday, I only know that we're just going to keep getting more bangers after bangers after bangers here on the Play vs. Uh, Championship stream. But, you know, before we get any further into the finals, we do want to let you know that on behalf of one of our lovely sponsors, that this message is brought to you by HyperX, the official gaming sponsor of Juju Smith, Schuster, Gordon Hayward, and Valkyrie. HyperX has gaming peripherals ranging from headsets, keyboards, the console controller chargers. No matter how you game, guys, we have something for you. You gotta use promo code HXCIF to get up to 30% off select HyperX products. Terms and conditions apply. Without further ado, Smax, we'll be getting into the draft phase quite relatively soon. Based on what we've seen from some of the Zoomers from the past two championship days, what are you kind of expecting to see? Not maybe necessarily champion specific wise, but in terms of teamwork. Well, again, we got to see a lot of really fun jungle champions and a lot of really fun jungle play styles too. Um, the, the recent changes, of course, have made it so you can't just go and clear all your camps all the time because they've lowered the time that it, uh, or they've increased the time that it takes between the spawns and uh, champions like Rumble as well are a little bit hurting in that as well because you, you usually do want to go for all the camps all the time. But with that one off the table and with Morgana off the table as well, we're seeing that both of the big MSI present stranglers are gone and we can get to the fun ones that we've been seeing recently. Going through this pick and van phase, seems like the California high schoolers are much more in tune with what the professionals are playing and are trying to stick to that meta because we already see Udyr, Rumble, and Morgana all being taken off the table in a blaze. But Lulu is going to be the first pick of choice. 
Speaking of pro play there, Rafa, Lulu made an appearance at MSI today. Uh, we're not going to talk about how Cloud9 performed with it, but it is an Enchanter uh, support. A little too soon. Yeah, it's a little too soon. But it is an Enchanter support that's worth looking at. This is a play style that hasn't really been meta all too recently, but with the recent buffs to Lulu and the changes to the Shirelias as well, this champion can be really powerful alongside other champions in the bot lane that scale really well with it. Things like the Kog'Maw and... From what it looks like in this game, the Sivir as well in this bot lane, we've got some really scale-heavy bot lanes so far. Sivir and Set. The answer from La Quinta High School, taking on the defending champions in Sunny Hills. And we already know, if there's a Lulu on the way, then there's a Kog'Maw ready to accompany it, as it's not quite the Juggermaw compositions we've seen in the days of old, but hold the phone, Smacks. We got a Scarecrow. It's Fiddlesticks on the Rift. We do have Fiddlesticks. This isn't one of the ones that we got to see so far in Play Versus. This is a clear heavy jungler who wants to get up until level 6, but the difference is once you do hit level 6, you become a damage team fight threat. A mage style playstyle, likely for Cow Cavalier right there in the jungle, is going to be coming through. And this champion, mm -hmm. he, he clears fast, he clears healthy, and later on, he is the most menacing champion on the rift with all of those fears in the huge team fights. As long as they get that vision down, which is one of the aspects of this game that I love seeing the most, Rafa, when you can coordinate with your team, landing all of the different vision zones, making sure that you can find the entrances to these team fights and start things off well for yourself. Yeah, vision control is going to definitely be imperative for La Quinta to maintain because if you're walking through a chokehold, getting ready for an objective fight, and then boom, Scarecrow, Crowstorm comes yeah. out. Omega AOE spooky. fear across the entire rift. It is definitely spooky. And we're not even in Halloween. We're like a few months out from October. But, you know, Cal Cavalier more than likely going to be piloting the fiddlesticks in the jungle, trying to take uh, the spooky season and bringing it a little earlier, even before the summer comes around. But for La Quinta, they're already taking out some priority top laners, that Darius being a huge bully. Because one thing we have to note, Smacks, is that Sunny Hills, even though fiddlesticks, Kogma, and Lulu all powerful, powerful in those team fights. It does take a while for them to come online, and you're going to need some early agency as a bridge to get you to that point in the game. Yeah, and with that being said, La Quinta could go for some really all-in maneuvers in that bottom lane as well. Oh We're not God. entirely certain where this set or the Volibear are going to be going quite yet, and that's good news for La Quinta because that means they can lock in things like the Blitzcrank or the Nautilus that can really stifle that early laning that laning phase of the Kog'Maw and the Lulu. If you land that Blitzcrank rocket grab on Kog'Ma, there's no Lulu in the world that can save you from that one. He's already all the way in no man's land. Lulu does not have the range to deal with it. So that's certainly something that La Quinta could go for. They're going to play it safe right there. Stick with their flex picks. I appreciate that one a lot. Going for the safe blind pick of the mid laner in Orion. I mean, the Orianna has just done so well within the past few patches. It just doesn't seem like Orianna ever goes out of style. Is always a champion that you can pick in almost any meta. It's just super flexible. But Sunny Hills, wow. Okay, we got Yone being locked in. That's going to be quite the aggressive lane. And, you know, talk oh, about yeah. early agency. You know, that, that's definitely one way to do it. Yone pairs really nicely with Lulu, too. If Kogma somehow does end up dying, or as we say in the business, uh, just using his passive well, um, the, <laughs> the Yone can become that substitute marksman and benefit from a lot of the buffs from Lulu. So that can be really exciting. It looks like we're going to see yet another melee carry on a solo lane. The Silas locked in. Still not sure if that's going to be top Silas or top Yone. Those two can flex around, but mm -hmm. it's going to be an advantage for Sunny Hills as La Quinta are still looking for that final pick. Gragas. La Quinta decide to go with the Gragas. Now, there's potential for a lot of flexibility with La Quinta's composition. This Gragas can go either in the support top or jungle role set in a similar style, although we haven't really seen set jungle since last season as a little bit of his clear speed was nerfed. Seems like Elated wants to be piloting the set into the jungle, and Jabang will be taking the Thunder Bear into the jungle role. For La Quinta, I definitely like this maneuver here, Smacks, because one way that you have to attack this Sunny Hills team composition, you look at all the scaling factors, you look at Cal Cavalier on this Fiddlesticks, he can clear pretty fast, but... He doesn't really come on online until level 6, and the way that you can deter that 
is by invading early or being able to have that early agency to impact the map before Fiddlesticks gets a chance to. And you can do that with Volibear. Yeah, and you can do that with Gragas too. They've got these deadly champions that can really go aggressive in that early game. And one of the things I really like about Gragas in this composition too is, yeah, it's not Blitzcrank, you're not pulling the Kog'Ma in, but you are still creating distance between Kog'Ma and Lulu. If you separate mm -hmm. them very, very largely with that explosive cask, then it accomplishes the same goal, especially if you angle that well and you get the Kog'Ma into your team anyway, this champion can certainly accomplish a similar thing to that Blitzcrank. It's a little bit more versatile too. You can play more in that front line. You can be a little bit more poke heavy in the lane. Your body slam gives you a lot of mobility. So this is a really cool champion that we're going to be seeing in that bottom lane. This is uh, one that requires a lot of skill, but uh, locking it in here in the finals in game one shows that they've got all the confidence in the world on that. And especially when you have a lane like a Sivir too, you have a lot of poke at your disposal. Sivir can clear the wave really quickly, and especially with the recent Sivir builds of the Lethality, maybe we're going to be seeing that one too. If you get hit by that Boomerang Blade, it's dealing like 500, 600 damage just in the lane alone, Rafa. Yeah, before we get any further, because I always love going deep in uh, diving into kind of these analytical discussions, just talking about how the compositions will be interacting with each other. We do have to mention Smacks that one of our other amazing sponsors today, and it has this awesome message. To those of you who fight and win battles every day on and off the playing field, show the Marines your fighting spirit and take what's inside to the next level. Find out more at www.marines.com. Thank you too much, so much to the U.S. Marine Corps for being an amazing sponsor as well for the stream. You know, back to the action though, and to this draft composition, and talking about the displacement power of Gragas and the engagement power of Sivir, as you already said before, you got a lot of AOE damage, and it's already going to be doing pretty, pretty efficiently with the composition that Sunny Hills have drafted. Because apart from Kogma, you got three melee bruisers trying to yeah. get in your face or trying trying to engage on top of you. So it's relatively easy for them to be all clumped up together, and those boomerang blades ricocheting back and forth. But you know, going to point of contingency about this early game, which is going to be super important for La Quinta. Not to say that Sivir cannot do well in the late game. She is kind of your late game insurance policy, but I think if you're La Quinta, you'd rather take your chances in the early game, stop the Kog'Maw and the Fiddlesticks before they get too unmanageable to deal with later on. Yeah, and sometimes in a composition like this, you you end up doing that by attacking the other lanes first. And then when you get your top laner, your mid laner super powerful, then they just become really, really deadly to deal with with a Kog'Maw. Because in a composition like the one that we're seeing on the blue team here, when, when you're going for a Kog'Maw composition, Rafa, you can go for the full utility, protect the Kog'Maw at all costs. We are all here just to empower Kog'Maw. Or you can do what they've done here, where you go, yeah, you've got Kog'Maw, yeah, you've got Lulu, that's for the lane, these champions pair really well. But then the rest of the composition is just packed with so much punch in that late game that every single member of this team is super threatening. As our good friend Joshi likes to call it, this is a threat overload composition. Silas, Fiddlesticks, <laughs> and Yone. Yeah. You, you can't just focus Kog'Ma. These other champions are going to deal a lot of damage to you. So I fully agree with you, Rafa. They do need to be going for a lot of a lot of deadliness in that early game, especially I'm looking at this set lane, actually. This is a champion that has been buffed quite tremendously so up in that top side. The AD ratios are a lot nicer, so building offensively rewards you more in that lane. And when you go for things like the Blade of the Ring King, it becomes really difficult to go against him in a side lane too. So mm -hmm. I feel like they do have a lot of ways to attack this game in that early game. And yeah, I, I definitely do give them the edge in that aspect of the game. Yeah, one of the advantages about set is the fact that when you look at a lot of the champions, normally they have a secondary resource bar, such as a mana resource or energy resource. Sometimes it's dependent on other things like heat for rumble. But for set, he doesn't have a resource bar. You can just cast abilities whenever. He doesn't even it doesn't even cost him health. You just start building up grit. And then uh, getting to a full certain point, you know, being able to combine that with the Haymaker, a full grid shield will give you not only a bigger shield, but also more true damage on the back end of that cast. But the fact that you don't have a secondary resource that you have to rely on versus someone like Silas, who is depending on mana, you start trading blows, you just continuously look to push the wave, 
you get lane priority for this Volibear, and then you can work together getting some early vision into Fiddlestick's jungle against Cow Cavalier, and you try to punish him and push him out of the game that way. Yeah, and especially if Elated goes for something like an Executioner's Calling uh, in that lane as well, reducing the healing of Silas is a really big deal because Silas uh, does have a really nice resource bar of the, the mana that can run out. The health is not something that he often has to worry about because of that Kingslayer healing. But he might need to worry about it a little bit more if there's Executioner's Calling up in that lane. Uh, or maybe just a Volley Bear, as you were mentioning. Any gank up there can be really good uh, to deal with Barrack and... As we get onto this rift, we're going to start to see where Zhibong and Cow Cavalier are going to make their make their way into this early game on the clears. Uh, Fiddlesticks is certainly the more interesting of the two in this one with his Bountiful Harvest, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what what these two guys are going to be bringing to the table early. Is <laughs> There's Beemaw. Beemaw's so cute, man. I know there is a... I think one of our friends, Lena, was like, yo, what if we had... Uh, a Kogma skin, but it was a cow. Like, in, and now it is. I was imagining like maybe Kogmu. You take like a yeah Kogmu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or Mu. <laughs> yeah, Kogmu, Muma. <laughs> one of the one of those two. You just put it in Muma a. Muma sounds a, like somebody's grandma. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So Kogmu <laughs> is probably probably the better one, better choice. But yeah, just like a cow onesie, um, and it has. <laughs> but then it got a. Uh, very graphic when someone suggested but what if it dies does it just explode in the, the blood it's like wait 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 guys relax it's just it's just a cute it's just a cute little cow guys it just explodes want. into hamburgers <laughs> that'd be a nice april fool skin unfortunately yeah, that time has already yeah come and gone <laughs> starting off the game though little no action very tame from all the laners here between La Quinta and Sunny Hills as Yibong. Gonna try to tank up that blue buff as he makes his way towards... Oh, look at this, though. This is actually very difficult to do, especially level one smacks. Cow Cavalier, though, being able to put the blue buff and the wolves right in the perfect least range to be able to get both with that Bountiful Harvest. Well done. You can tell that Cal Cal Cavalier has put a lot of time and hours into the practice tool on that fiddle sticks. Oh yeah. Not an easy champion to operate in the jungle, especially on those early level clears, but he's making his way through it and he's already up a camp right now. Jibong actually skipped out on Wolves, perhaps in an effort to make a play up on this top side. You see that he's gone for just the single target camps in this game on the Bully Bear and that might mean the paint is coming through to the top lane for Barrack. The wave is already being pushed under this turret. Volley Bear is moving into the river. Because he I'm wants to go for an invade. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the unfortunate thing for Jibong, they're the, assuming that Fiddle Six was going to start on the bottom side of the map with a Raptor and Red Buff duo clear, and they would have been able to find him. But the fact that now Jibong says, hey, wait a second. All the camps are gone. I guess uh, Cal Cavalier started on the top side of the map. This does open up an opportunity, though, for Jibong to potentially dive. Barrack is going to spot that nice one out board. now. So Jibong, they can't make this dive out. So, well, all right, they're, they're going to try. <laughs> all right. Ooh, no Haymaker makes this really tricky, especially if Barrack does come in range of a Kingslayer. Still going to be attempted, though. Got That's some right extra crowd control. Elated is tanking Ooh. as much as he can. First Blood does go over to La Quinta, so... Well played from them. It, it was a very spooky dive, even without the Haymaker, but they make it work, Max. Yeah, they absolutely do. I really like that play out of La Quinta. Lands onto Barrack. He doesn't even have to flash away. Uh, neither, actually none of them do. All the flashes are still available, so if they want to go for another one of those plays, they certainly can. Barrack coming back to the lane with an extra cloth armor just to try to deal with these auto-attacking menaces in his lane, but... Yeah, certainly still going to be an advantage for La Quinta. Now Cal Cavalier is trying to gank of his own. This is the silence there. A teleport is coming in as a response, and Jibong is there for the counter gank, flashing over the wall, stunning Jenny in oh. their tracks. And they find Cal Cavalier as well. Gonna have to flash away to safety. And La Quinta, one after another, finding a play after play. First a proactive one on the top side of the map, and then a reactive one coming out on top. 
huge early game teamwork coming through in this game, Rafa. Jibong on the Volley Bear. We saw him skip out on a bunch of these camps and just go immediately for the ganks. And it's working out beautifully for him. He's matching the levels of the Fatal Sticks, even though he's down those camps. We get to see this mid gank again. Cal Kevlar walks into this at level four. You'd expect him to be the more powerful jungler, but Jibong has the extra crowd control in this early game. He flashes over that wall and even Elated is in on the party. The teleport through from top. Missing out on some minions just to make sure the play keeps going in favor of La Quinta. This is looking super, super nice. And this is exactly what you wanted to see from them in the early game, Rafa. Early agency. You got to start the snowball in your favor before Sunny Hills with that superior late game composition comes in with the scaling factor. You got to make sure that all right, you are able to close out the game early on. La Quinta already off on the right foot. Jibong, two kills to their name. Going for that bomby cinder, so more than likely we'll be seeing one of the either chem tank or frostfire gauntlet builds coming out for this volibear. We know that chem tank has been nerfed quite substantially, but still powerful active movement speed allows you to get in range to make a gank happen, especially when you're working against laners like Kogma who don't really have any escape abilities. Touching on the Kogma just a tad here, we see that. Sun Chang is pushed in that wave, gonna be recalling for the first time in this game, and is already up a little bit of these minions in this game. He is, of course, the main win condition on Sunny Hill's composition. We've got this Kogma, the Lulu. These two champions just pair so incredibly well together, and especially once you get down to the items like the Runen's Hurricane, the Kraken Slayer, the Rage Blade, you're gonna be shredding through just about every single member on La Quinta, as long as they are not literally on top of you, already stunning you, or pile driving you into the earth. Taking a look at the state of the map. First Dragon is still up on the field, ready for the taking. Jabong and Muffin, thinking about potentially starting it up as oh. Cal Cavalier will be spotted on the top side of the map. The Lady was trying to get that crab up, but this gives them a window of opportunity to say, hey, you know what, Fiddle Six, top side of the map, they can't contest the Dragon. Cal Cavalier smited that too, so even if he did come over here, would not have the advantage at all. Jibong has that one still available. And I believe that was the... Oh, no, no, he still needs uh, he still needs one more to get the 900 smite, so... The new 900 smite is so busted, man. It is yeah. it, it is crazy. I It's something that, as a jungle main myself, I'm still getting used to. Just jumping randomly from 450 to 900 Ooh. as... Elated might get ganked here. Crow Store coming in. Fear is out. He's got the Haymaker shield, but it's not going to be enough to survive the gank. And Barrick picks up one for himself. Combo of ultimates right there. Elated does survive a little while longer. I'm really surprised he got the Haymaker out in the end, but just doesn't quite matter in the end. Doesn't have flash. Doesn't have the time to cast his own ultimate right there. In fact, gets show stopped himself. Silas take, taking that one away. And ooh, a mid gank as oh. well. Yeah, Jenny fires out the ultimate. Fate sealed. The wood player is going to use the shockwave in response. Thankfully, because Cal Cavalier already used Crow Storm on the top side of the map, doesn't really have much to offer in follow up for the mid lane fight there. Jenny's going to be able to use the help of Cal to shove in that wave, get a recall off. We're going to take a quick replay on this top side action. Yeah, take a look at where this Fiddlesticks actually is. This is still not yet in vision is why the fear actually lands onto Elated. And from there on now, there's really not a lot that you can do right there. Elated just burns down to the ground. Cal Cavalier dances on his grave there in the end. And Disrespect. Yeah, it absolutely is there, Rafa, but uh, respecting him enough to show up in that top side nonetheless. <laughs> Elated will be pushing in that wave just to make sure that Jibong can take this Rift Herald uncontested. And that's really the aspect of the game where Cal Cavalier needed to step up a bit. He's farming very well. He, in fact, has the most farm in the game tied with a few other members. And participating in that last kill is going to feel pretty good. But down a dragon. Going to be down a Rift Herald as well. Now that Jibong is picking that one up. And his ultimate's pretty good, but needs to make that one work a little bit more. You have to remember that with that successful dive from Jibong and Elated, early on to Barrack, the top side, that did put Barrack a little bit behind in terms of gold and XP. Able to come Ooh. back though, thanks. Oh, beautiful. Body slam into the cast. Soon Chang still has the flash. 
and getting exhausted. He's gonna now finally flash away. Muffin trying to put in the damage. It's gonna be enough from Monami, my friend, and Muffin. We're gonna be able to come out on top of that 2v2, and now Ray, unfortunately, doesn't really have enough damage to be able to take out Muffin. Did have the flash away from the Ekathian surprise, but Soon Shang does go down. It's a 2v2 right there where the Gragas ultimate is put on display incredibly well. Monami finds the displacement to separate Kog'Maw and Lulu. This is exactly what I wanted to see from that explosive cask, making sure that Soon Chang cannot stay in the same range as Rey, denies things like the Lulu shield, the help picks, the, uh, the, what's it called? Whimsy, the, the polymorph, that's what it is, is the ultimate to cast mid. Fade Sealed and Crow Storm, and a wood player has got no chance of getting out of that one alive. Well played from Sunny Hills, the mid jungle duo making it work. And wood player saving the flash right there. He might have been able to get out, but yeah, the ultimates just have so much extra reach. We get to watch this one yet again. He's almost in range of the Thea right here. He's still out of vision, but just a little bit out of that one. Has to flash forward with the fear, but. Man, the damage is just crazy from these two champions. Fiddlesticks and Yone do pack a gigantic punch. And there with the Hextech Alternator, there's an extra bit of burst there too. Looking ahead, Smacks, we got a second dragon of the game coming up in just a minute. Akinta High School already having picked up the first dragon of the game with that Infernal. Would love to continue accelerating their pace. Still relatively just under a thousand gold in terms of advantage, but I haven't really been able to take many turret plates. Only really one in that top side for Elated against Barrack. Teleport has just been used from Elated as well. So if they're going to fight over this dragon, there's a window of opportunity for Barrack to be able to make a visit down onto the bot side. Jibong has the Rift Herald here too. So if they want to time that one together, they can drop the Rift Herald, get a little bit of extra pressure, and then start up on the Drake. You can see that Jibong is thinking about dropping that one around here. Spotted out by an effigy, but he's still this Volibear. He's still going to be trying to find these plays, even the, even down a level. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, you got to imagine that he's going to be more powerful than Cow Cavalier. Drake now spawned. Oh, Body Slam on a Soon Chang, but he's getting feared. Explosive cast doesn't really propel Soon Chang right into the arms of La Quinta. And now they have to turn around and notice that teleport that we talked about. Barrack now coming into the fight, but it's a three man shockwave from NA Wood player. And the IOE damage might be enough, but Crow Storm comes out. Fate Sealed is the response from Sunny Hills. And just like that, it's a back and forth bloodbath between both California high schools. But my God, Smacks. What an awesome display of true skill and talent from all these youngsters. It's seven to seven now, Rafa. That was a five for four in the end for Sunny Hill. These team fights are already getting absolutely absurd. 12 minutes in. This is just the second Drake of the game here, Rafa. Mona Me going to try to arrive on this one because you have to remember the death timers are still so, so short. But now there are... Just about no ultimates remaining. There's a teleport coming in. Cow Cavalier, you can't solo this. Yeah, no flash either. No Crow Storm to get out of this one. Alive, Exhaust is the slow and the auto attacks. Mene Whip player gets the shutdown and they secure the second dragon of the game here, Smacks. It also secures that in the end, the fight was indeed a five for five. Everybody died already in this game, Rafa. We get to see the start of this one. Monami does land all the crowd control on the Soon Chang, but as much as you can separate Kog'Maw from Lulu, if you are separate from all of your team, then it does about the exact same thing to you. So oh, it was a not going to feel very good. Oh, yeah. Oh, my we get to see some there. crazy ultimates. Watch this Yone ult. Oh, that is brutal from Jenny. We, get, this we was... also get to see uh, on display the Lethality Sivir Q. We're about to watch that one. Deals a million damage to Jenny. Oh, That's a look, lot. the minion auto too. It was yeah. <laughs> it was the red caster. That was the true MVP. Being able to assist with Muffin and taking down Jenny before their utter demise. I was looking for the word. Correct. We got there. But now moving forwards, Max. Still, after all that chaos, it is still just under a thousand gold advantage for La Quinta High School. But eight to seven, fifteen kills total. 15 deaths have been shed on Summoner's Rift here in today's opening match. 
And when we're looking at the pace of La Quinta High School, a, a composition that we, at the very top of the show, noted, this team has got to get ahead. They got to got to accelerate the pace. They got to make sure that they are able to start making the ways of closing out the game before Sunny Hills are hitting the two item wake ups, the three item wake ups, especially for Soon Chain. He hasn't hit that first item yet, so there's still plenty of time for La Quinta to start knocking down these turrets, but we're all already at the 15 mark. And so far, Smax, none of these turrets are close to being taken down. Yeah, plates have already dropped. The Rift Herald actually was not cast ever. Dubong did not find time to do that one. He's going to try to take the second one to uh, to solve the error of that last way. Uh, ended up expiring while he was dead. But yeah, that is that's a good point here, Rafa. The turrets just are still all alive. It's still somewhat in the laning phase. And that's, that's still a good thing for Soon Chang, I would imagine, because he, he is still trying to get to that next item. Oh, wait. Uh oh. Yone. Did they get the smite down? I, I, I'm not sure, but Fate Sealed is the call. Looking for more from Sunny Hills. Barrack trying to make as much damage as he can. Oh. Look at the Kingslayer healing, being able to escape the jaws of death. Literally two digit HP bars still manages to survive. And because of that, Jabong, even though he was able to smite away the Rift Herald, no one can safely walk up and secure it. And Rafa, we're seeing that there just isn't any healing reduction up in this top side of the map right now. Muffin has that Executioner's Calling, but he's down bot. Blade doesn't quite have it yet. He can't reduce the Kingslayer healing, which I believe is fully maxed out right now in this lane. So we do get to see Barrack play so, so aggressively and have it all completely work out thanks to that extra sustain that he's got just in his kit. It's to steal the Volley Bear ultimate as well. So he's just so, so tanky and difficult to deal with. Oh, Watch this no. healing, bam. Watching this off screen a second time, I didn't notice this before, but NA Wood player was trying to get the Shockwave down at a Cow Cavalier. The timing was just a little too late as he had already channeled the Crow Storm and blinked into the fray. Shockwave goes wide, and without that, I would imagine that if NA Wood player was able to get the timing right or had waited and used it in that skirmish there on the riverside, could have potentially taken down Barrack before he got off that final Kingslayer that allowed him to live. It's unfortunate for La Quinta High School, and this is where, if you're Sunny Hills, you're starting to look optimistic because La Quinta's snowball that they had to generate is not coming through, and we're almost at the 20-minute mark. Feels like it's all been mitigated thus far, Rafa, and another thing do you have to mention, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but the Lethality Sivir is the build in this game. Muffin is going for the Dark Harvest, the Man Immune, likely going to be picking up things like a Dusk Blade with the next item purchase, and this is a Sivir build which can be really strong in the mid-game, like one to two items is where this really takes off. And the lane is really obnoxious to deal with too, but later on you're missing out on a lot of extra crit damage on things like the Ricochet, which are really good for... Wait, hold on. What? <laughs> well, okay, we're raised gone, but there's the counter response from Cal Cavalier Crowstorm. Oh. Gets the fear down elated, but he's trying to make things work again. But he goes down, and I think Soon Chang is just untouched Ooh. over the wall. He's just firing spicky honey goo against the members of La Quinta. He gets a double, and a wedded player is able to answer one back, though. Oh. Doesn't have Shockwave anymore. Look at the moves from Soon Chang! The quick flash! He picks up the triple, and then a wood has to run for his life. Soon Chang on the Kogma right there. This is why they've drafted this composition, the Lulu, to pair up with it. Five kills now on the Beemaw. Oh man, save the bees, Rafa. He's popping off in this one. We get to see this fight yet again. This is without Lulu. Ray dies instantly. They do not have this one. They start off on the back foot. And Elena even gets this huge engage also, landing a gigantic stun, but the teleport in from Barrack, the Kog'Maw damage over the wall completely uncontested, even gets the snipe oh. over there on Mona Me. Man, Rafa, this is, this is Kog'Maw this at his peak. Oh yeah. Watch this flash right here. Dodges the Q. Ooh. Almost gets his next kill too. Forces the flash out of wood player. That would have been a quadra kill. Sim Chang. Don't be don't be fooled by his cute fuzzy bee looks. Yeah. 
That is a terrifying living artillery. No pun intended. As for Sunny Hills, suddenly Soon Chang went from no item power spikes to suddenly Kraken Slayer and Phantom Dancer both completed. Whereas I don't think there's anyone else on the rift that has achieved two items f uh, fully completed here, Smack. Would you like to hear my Kogma impression? Oh, please. All right, I'm gonna need to get some water in my mouth first. You gotta be a little gargly. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Better do it quick. All right, cut the camera. Cut, cut the cake. <laughs> Production, I need you to boot this guy out. <laughs> that was pretty good, though, Smax. Jokes aside. Thank you. Well, well done. I'll give you a give you a round of applause on that. <laughs> Now for Soon Chang, that's 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 probably how they're feeling right now. Five kills to their name being, being going massive after that triple kill in that river skirmish. The second dragon still went over to the ways of La Quinta, but this third dragon. This is gonna be a cloud soul. More ability haste or on the ultimate abilities, which means things like Fade Seal from Jenny, Crowstorm from Cow Cavalier. Oh. Uh oh, but Soon Chang. You don't have your Ooh. Lulu in the shutdown. It's there for Muffin. The teleport is coming in from Jenny, but the it, the play has already been made. The death is already coming by. Soon Chang singing praise, but you got to remember the Kogma is powerful by it when protected, Smacks, but not by itself when it can be displaced by a Gragas barrel. Just under the turret there too, Monami. This is the second time in this game they're showing why the Gragas has been locked in as a response. I really like this extra tech that they're putting in to stifle this Kogma. Worked out so far. We get to watch this yet again. Ray in vision, I believe, is about to just walk away right here, trying to get some vision down, but can't do this in range of Gragas. Soon Chang just walks up too far. Look at that angle. That's beautiful. And then they know that Soon Chang, after using the flash to get out of that river skirmish earlier, can't have it for another five minutes. Monami being able to capitalize immediately on that window. And La Quinta being able to give that shutdown over means that Muffin now finishes their second item power spike in that Dusk Blade of Drakthar. Lethality Siver is online. That it is. That was a 900 gold shutdown right there. Feels amazing, man. Gotta get all of that extra gold. And. Puts it back in La Quinta's favor right now, as you can see. They're up pretty much the exact amount of that shutdown. <laughs> Maybe a little bit less, but see that the marksman players in this game are the ones with the most gold. Muffin. On Sivir, you don't have the same level of scaling on the lethality build, but you are still really scary. And you can pivot later on, maybe, as well. Cow Cavalier's here, though. This is a Crowstorm Fiddlesticks. Yeah, you gotta walk away. Don't make the mistake, Muffin. Don't do it. Shh. If we're quiet, maybe they'll be able to hear the crows. Oh no, don't do it. Oh, oh, oh. Didn't... oh. <laughs> they, the barrel didn't actually see them, but they, they panicked. They're like, oh crap, we gotta, gotta bail. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those ones where Cavalier's gonna walk, walk, watch back right here and be like, oh, I still could have done it. Man, I've been scammed. Man. It is good what effort. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Better I definitely... effort than he initially thought it was. <laughs> you live and you learn. Oh, Barrick actually taking the showstopper from Elated. But thankfully for Elated, they have now invested into the Bramble Vest. So with that Grievous Wounds, Barrick doesn't get as much juicy healing from the Kingslayer. They're looking forward, Smax. Fourth Dragon is about to spawn. La Quinta... Want to be able to pick this one up so that they can get one point closer to Cloud Soul. Teleport is going to come preemptively from Elated. It's going to be responded by Barrack. They want to be able to make this fight. Watch for the Crow Storm here. Smacks Cow Cavalier looking for the position. Main Seal comes up. Cow Cavalier is now going to make the approach there. Crow Storm doesn't really land on anyone. He has to flash forward, but he's taking so much damage. Barrack and Cow Cavalier both popping their stopwatch, trying to buy as much time as they can. But Muffin, untouched, un affected by any of the advancements that Sunny Hill's trying to make. Soon Chang and Ray try to walk up. They still have Barrack in their side, but he's going to have to make the engage. He's going to have to make the hero play to try and push them off. Health bars are 
somewhat low for a few members here on La Quinta. It is possible for Sunny Hills, but they're just going to force down this dragon and should be able to walk themselves out of here. And La Quinta will be able to take their prize. Sunny Hills was still threatening things at the end of that one, but you just can't go for any more engagements. You don't have the hijack anymore. You don't have your ultimate combination that they've been using so ridiculously well up until that point, but couldn't find the angle right there, Rafa. It seems like Jenny went maybe a little bit too early on this one. We get to watch this again. Jenny on the Yone takes it in their own hands, goes for this engage. It's a really nice one. Just left Cow Cavalier out to dry, really. Has to flash, has to proto belt right into the thick of things, and even use the stasis in the end, but just gets taken down. Muffin with the double kill on this Sivir. It's so hard to keep track of them, too, because you got that extra bit of stealth. You got the spell shield also, so. Yeah, the, the Sivir is going to be pretty problematic, and then we, we do get to see that the Drake does eventually fall. This is the third Drake of the game right now for Sunny Hill, so. Or, or La Quinta, excuse me. That would be just one away from Soul now, Rafa. 26 minutes in, Smax. La Quinta were struggling in that mid game to try and find windows to accelerate the game. And, and take note of this, Smax. La Quinta are one dragon away from Soul, but they still haven't cracked an outer turret. In fact, yeah. the first turret, <laughs> Gold, went over to the side of Sunny Hills in that bottom lane. The fact that La Quinta have not been able to break open the rift is kind of a bad thing, but it's also a good thing. The bad thing is obviously, of course, that you need to be able to have opportunities and windows to be able to close out the game once you find an opportunistic fight within the next few minutes. But it does mean that there's still a lot of standing gold to pick up for these members of La Quinta. So if you're looking for a quick little surplus or stimulus boost of gold. You win a team fight and you just knock down all these out of turrets here, Smax. Dragons are more fun anyway, honestly. Gotta go for all the dragons, gotta go for all the Rift Heralds. There are five out of six on those, but yeah, still, uh, we're looking for those first uh, turrets to fall eventually, La Quinta. Still hasn't been su super keen on opening up the entirety of the map. We're. Getting to a point where the items are going to be really, really powerful for the next fights, though. I do want to draw our attention to Soon Chang's third item of choice, the Navori Quick Blades. Ooh. This is a really cool one. So this is a this is one of the Kogma variations you can go for. In this one, it allows you to keep permanent uptime on your W because it lowers the cooldown whenever you crit on your W and, and your other basic abilities, too. So this build feels really good when you have a lot of frontline and you still want to be hitting people all the time. I, it does sacrifice a little bit of on-hit damage, so you can't go Rage Blade with this. Well, it, the game does allow you to, but you really don't want to, because when you have Rage Blade, you can't crit. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, the Navori Quick Blade's passive doesn't do anything. But it, it is one of the variations you can go for, and it does provide Sun Chang with a lot more safety in a fight. This must be really nice to just have permanent, what is it, 650 range? Yeah. 700 range with the W turned on? It's nice. Yeah. Like, ah, yes, I can hit them from a decent, not quite a screen away, but, you know, a decent <laughs> safe distance from with my ch champion here. And then, as long as you got Ray, be able to empower you with the Whimsy. And you don't necessarily need to depend on that Winston's Rage played for the attack speed stack, because you just get a nice attack speed steroid boost yeah. from Lulu. It's nice. You even get to save this turret. How much health does that turret have? Can we, can we give can we give that one a look? It's in the mid lane. Getting there. Not very much. 18. 18. Mm. Yeah. Yo, at this point, if you're an NA Wood player, just... Go up and poke it. <laughs> chuck, a, chuck, chuck an auto attack. It'll fall over. It is it is literally balsa wood at this point. You don't need to do that much to to collapse it. it is being we held got this up by two popsicle sticks. Yes. Did you ever make those like fortresses with popsicle sticks as a kid? I was not crafty enough to do that. Uh, Man. 
But it looks like the Quinta are oh. crafty enough to start up this Baron right now, Rafa. Look at that transition. Yeah, with the fourth dragon coming up, they realize that, hey, you know what? Sunny Hills might want to try and stop us from taking the Cloud Soul, but let's just go for the Baron. Unfortunately, Baron reduces your magic resist, and since Cow Cavalier was on his way as well, a Crow Storm onto a magic Ooh, resist down. shredded. All right, well, here we go. They say, okay, well, now we just got to burn down this dragon before they get a chance to burn down the Baron. We're going to see how fast they can do. I mean, it's already gone. That's the that's the beauty of being able to have a Kog'Maw on your team who just does max health percentage damage. You shred through objectives, but they might have enough time. It looks like Sunny Hills is saying, you know what? We're just going to take the dragon. We don't have enough time to be able to get over to the Baron. But Barrick is in no man's land here because oh, you wow. have four La Quinta high schoolers we're about to put you into the dirt. They disable the turret with the Stormbreaker. Barrack is trying to buy as much time as he can, already using explosive cast that he stole and hijacked, but it's still not enough. He goes down. Not quite there, Barrack. He knows that he's just dead. He knows that he's just going to stall for time now. Does a great job of it, by the way. Get, make sure that his team gets to take down two of those mid lane turrets, but... And he does end up falling, and so does the Baron now for La Quinta. That's going to be a really big deal. That's going to allow them to start cracking down on these turrets. The top one was the first one to fall. The Baron minion's now coming into mid lane. Do you want to point out, though, on the other side of that fight, NA Wood player was forced to flash away due to the advances of Jenny using the Fate Sealed, using the Flash, trying to get something across the map. But NA Wood, NA Wood player was able to survive. Everyone on the Quinta now has this Baron. They've got this really big advantage, and all they really lost for it was, well, one, that mid lane turret, but also the Cloud Drake. Those don't really do a lot by themselves. One thing to note here, Smack Elated. You know, we don't normally talk about items that much, but he has picked up a Guardian's Angel. Usually, when that item is picked up, it is signaling this next fight has to be the fight that ends all or be all. Because La Quinta, they know there is one item power spike left for Soon Chang before it is going to become very, very difficult to win further ones afterwards. So they have to make this next fight count. And when they still have Baron buff, they might have enough firepower to destroy all the turrets and take down the Nexus. Touching on the Guardian Angel, though, Jenny has one as well. Soon Chang's building up toward it. Does have a stopwatch, so not just La Quinta who are looking for that. It is also Jenny. Oh, Whoa! Beautiful four-man fate sealed. The shockwave is trying to dissuade as much time as they can, but look at Soon Chang not getting touched. But he took a bunch of burst damage out of nowhere. I'm not sure where it came from, but La Quinta, they are able to turn around the engage from Sunny Hills. They don't take down Soon Chang or Jenny but it's enough to dissuade them from being able to engage further and they don't lose anyone, Smacks. Yeah, nobody died on their team right there, Rafa. They've got this Baron wave in the top lane as well. They've sort of abandoned mid lane, but they are going to take this inner turret top. They might have enough firepower to continue this one soon, Chang. You gotta be careful. The Gragas right there. All right, see if they can find this engager, if they can just take this inhibitor turret and walk away. Soon Shank still has both summoners up, flash and heal available. So if Monami tries to go for a body slam flash, he can always answer in response, but he's not gonna take his chance. But look at the range, look at the damage. I mean, that is a support Gragas, but still, can't sleep on. <laughs> can't sleep on that max HP shred coming out from Soon Chang. They do give up the inhibitor though. La Quinta. Now, do they have enough time? Make another move, but check out this replace, Max. Yeah. Let's watch what Soon Cheng actually does in this fight, because like you said, he took a huge amount of burst. I didn't quite see what it was either. I bet it was a boomerang gonna, blade. We're gonna watch him exclusively right now. He's right there. He's in the face of G. Watch Bon, bumping. dealing a lot of damage. Oh, oh it's the Q. Yeah. That it boomerang. actually is just Sivir. Yeah. Holy moly. Muffins. Can't buy Sivir in a corridor. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. He, he probably was just as confused as we were. Because it was, like, it was just like in the middle of eight people. Sivir Boomerang Blade cuts through everyone. That Sivir Boomerang Blade probably, probably did about 4,000 damage in just one Q. That's crazy. Yeah. And even Muffin has the awesome Serpent's Fang tech as well to be able to cut through any shields that Ray's trying to provide Su Chang with. That's... That's nuts. And yeah. they have a GA as well. 
which neither the GA for Muffin or Alita got popped in that fight either. So this Cloud Dragon that's coming up in 30, they can still play with more risk tolerance. They can they can play more aggressively knowing that they have a second chance at life in this upcoming fight. Rob will look at this. Soon Chang didn't... Oh, that, that flash is a fiddlestick effigy, by the way. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon <laughs> Chang, he might have gone for Guardian Angel. He decided against it. That, that BF Sword is now an Infinity Edge. He's all in on dealing damage in this fight. But... They do have to give up that dragon. Can't really go for anything with it. It is going to be the soul, but it's going to be okay for them. It might maybe set up some vision around this Baron. Fortunately, though, it's not up for another minute. Losing a lot of priority on bot lane. They might just take an L with this turret also. Oh, big cooldown seat. used. Oh, wait, no fate sealed means... Engage is really dependent on Cal Cavalier and potentially Barrack if he's able to take something like a Stormbreaker from Jabong or a Showstopper from Elated. Explosive Cast could also be valuable as well for the taking, but slowly and surely La Quinta are trying to chip away from the base of Sunny Hills, but we're approaching 36 minutes here, Smack, so there, there's still always the possibility that Sunny Hills, if they're able to stall out the game long enough we're going to be staring at the face of a five-item full-build Kog'Maw. And if you're not able to touch him, if you're not able to get onto him with, with Jenny and Cal Cavalier and Barrack all getting up in your face, Soon Chang, theoretically, should be able to shred through this entire La Quinta squad. You know, Rafa, it didn't quite hit me how late we were into this game until I looked at the items and I saw the Ward Stone picked up by Mona Mee. <laughs> that is not an item that you see very often. It has to be super duper late into a game for it to make an appearance. But that's where we are right now. We're in the territory where one single team fight could be the end. Fate Sealed is up. Cow Cavalier looking for angles as well. We get a little zoom out here. I want to see the vision control that is being put down by La Quinta's. We have to be able to see from where the angles that Cal Cavalier wants to be able to operate from. Doesn't look like they have quite a chance. Jenny gets spotted out by this control ward. They're going to back off here. Jenny has caught out Ooh. three. And another three with the Fate Seal. Crowd Storm falls up. But it's a stopwatch from Jabon. Trying to buy as much damage. Later goes down, but he has the GA. Look at Muffin, though. No one's touching Muffin. Soon Chang as well. Both the backline in carries are going to be super important. Oh! The man shockwave from one player. And goodbye to Soon Chang. One Ooh! player able to Quadra, give this man the penna! He deserves it for making such an amazing oh. hero play! Penta kill for NA one player! That's the end of the game, Rafa! What a way to close it out! The shockwave heard round the world! NA one player! Penta kill to close game one and take Lakita High School to match point in the finals, Rafa. Holy cannoli! Dios mio! Like, what a way to close out game one of this incredible championship finals for California State. My god, what, can, can we get a replay of that pentakill? I gotta see that one more time. My oh, we god, got that we gotta was check this out. disgusting. Yeah, look at that Oriana right there. Over there on the right of your screen. Just not even in. in the beginning of this one. That blast cone. Just wait. Oh, he doesn't even Everyone. use it to get over this fight. How, he just walks up. He, he's right there. He pulls it back. Here it comes. Are you telling comes. me NA Wood player just walks up slowly oh. and down smashes all four of them? Insta triple kill. Gotta, Barrick makes him work for it. Barrick does make him work for this. But man, the pentakill from NA Wood Player. They don't even need the Baron at that point, Rafa. What the They said, heck? forget that. Our mid laner just wiped him. Let's take the <laughs> Nexus. Well, well, well. La Quinta High School definitely taking it to the defending champions in Sunny High. Backs against the wall. They're going to have to now find a way to come back at this one. We have seen two reverse sweeps, though, 
in the play versus tournament so far. Do Sunny Hills have a chance or did Laquinta close it out here? Stay tuned and we'll find out in game two.
The fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Play vs. Spring 2021 CIF Esports Initiative Championship presented by Omen, NVIDIA, HyperX, and United States Marine Corps. It's myself, Rafa, and Smacks back at it again. And Smacks, I, I do believe you have a, a lovely message for the people as well. I do have a lovely message, and this message is brought to you by HyperX, the official gaming sponsor of Juju, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jordan, Gordon Hayward, and Valkyrie. HyperX's gaming peripherals ranging from headsets to keyboards to console controller chargers. No matter how you game, we've got something for you. Use promo code HXCIF, that is HXCIF, to get up to 30% off HyperX pr products. Terms and conditions apply. That message is super exciting, almost as exciting as that pentakill we just got to see. Yo! Rob. What was that's that? That's what I'm saying. I, I Honestly, after that, I, 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 I don't have any words for you, Smacks. That, that's all I can say. But NA Wood Player, absolutely fantastic. Um, oh my goodness. But now, Sunny Hills. You have to remember, these are the defending champions. In fact, some of these players on this squad have not only won the previous championship in the fall, but also the Summer nice. Showdown in the year before 2020, and even the Fall Championship in 2019. So almost two years ago. So Sunny Hills High School, they don't want to be giving up their championship title anytime soon. If La Quinta want that, they're going to have the pride from their dead cold hands. I know it's a little graphic here <laughs> for high schoolers, but you know what? It's on the rift. The dead cold hands of the champions on the rift. You know, obviously we're going to be <laughs> yes. I shaking save. hands, shaking hands <laughs> after the game is over. No one's actually dying. <laughs> oh, man. Pick and man phase though, Smacks. We're flying through it once again. Yep. We're, we're already getting through all of these. Uh, the bands actually haven't changed too much. We have swapped sides, though. Laquinta's going to be on the blue side, Sunny Hills on the red. And there goes Lulu already, Rafa. So Laquinta, even though they did just win that last game, they are showing some respect over there to Ray. The Lulu was a little bit difficult to deal with. Now we get to see what their first pick is. It's Nocturne. Wow. Well, we did see that the, the Nocturne was banned away from... I believe, uh, by La Quinta against Sunny Hills as a first pick priority. But this time around, they took away the Lulu, even though that they won the game overall. They respect the power of Kog'Maw and Lulu together, and they, they they feel that by eliminating the Lulu, you don't have to worry about the Kog'Maw. The Akali blind, though, 
lock in for Sunny Hills and oh. Urgot. All right, well, we already know what solo, solo leader is going to be here. Smash. We absolutely do. We have a very different game on our hands right now, Rafa. Sunny Hills, they saw what happened in the previous game. They're saying, all right, that stuff didn't work. We're throwing it out the window. We're going straight for the new hotness. The Urgot top lane for Barrack. The Akali in the mid lane for Jenny. Still an assassin mid, but Akali is one of those ones that packs a lot more of that magic damage punch, and the stealth can be really big for those team fights as well. Much less engage power, but still a lot of damage. It's going to be up against the rise there for NA Wood player. Again, mm -hmm. we're seeing a vacation from the previous game here. No no champions have been shared between the two so far at all it's a whole new world smacks once the champion priority has shifted up a bit gotta ah. put up new champions but just as we say that the late it's like hey give me, give me the set again <laughs> i i had fun playing playing uh anime e-boy up in the top <laughs> top lane here the boss that's a, that's such a cool title by the way imagine yeah. you know just coming around is like who's that boss that's the boss Shout out to Lonely he, Island. He just loves his mama. Ah, set, set is so fun. I love that. Ooh. Oh, you know what, Rafa? We have our entire top side set, assuming this is not going to be the set support. Everybody on that top side is already chomping at the bit to get themselves their champion so far. The Skarner in the jungle as a response to Nocturne. I like this one a lot. Both of these junglers are very, very focused on hitting level six and then going for those ganks. Skarner, though. He has to come into that close quarters to do so. Nocturne can do that from a long distance away. So that's really where that main difference is. But other than that, these two are going to be doing about the same thing in this game. Yeah, when I saw the Skarner locked in, I was like, Captain Flowers is not in this game, right? Yes. <laughs> are we uh, got Clayton Reigns in here? Well, someone might as well go at him on Twitter. Say, hey, Cal Cavalier is going to be busting out your favorite champion, Cap. Let's see if you can give him any pointers or if... He can teach a thing or two to uh, the main Scorpion King himself. As a bunch of marksmen have just been eliminated off the table here, Smack. So even though that the Lulu is no longer there, I mean, Kongma is one of the few <laughs> marksmen left after Sivir, Ezreal, Vars, Jinx, Senna being eliminated off the table here. Maybe watching a high school Skarner game would be the very thing to cheer up Captain Flowers after having to cast that Cloud9 game earlier. Man. I'm sure he's not feeling too happy about that. Man. One. The Tristana has been locked in, though, in brighter <sighs> news. This is a very fun champion to be seeing. It's a dive champion. All the jump resets with the rocket jump can be really fun. This is a interesting hover from Monami. That would signal to me that it actually is the set support if I do lock that one in. That one well, is much more unclear, though. Hmm. Flippy floppity between La Quinta and all these champions here. Because there's there's cases to be made that Nocturne can get either go jungle or one of the solo lanes. Galio can go mid or support. Set can go either the solo lanes or support. Please. Oh, Smacks. Please do it. This is your favorite champion. Please. As of Yay! now. And it has been locked in. Oh, Samira. Oh, that's so funny. Whenever this champ, I, I got to do it. It's tradition. Samira, Samira. Ooh, baby, when you talk like that, you make a woman go mad. Okay. We're, we're done with that. Mm -mm. It's just tradition, mm -mm. you know? Uh, oh, thank you so much. My, my producer is complimenting me on my voice right here. Uh, this, mm -mm. That's unnecessary. Mm -mm. Shout out to my producer who also has a lovely voice and lovely producer skills, uh, Jacob back there Dude, Producer jacob. jacob kevin and harry all doing oh, an yeah. amazing job on the production side today shout out to them because they don't get enough love in <laughs> fact this is a psa that i'm going to be sharing with the entire audience here thank your producers thank all of your production team all around i know that me and smacks we get to put our faces on the camera and so if anything goes wrong you know sometimes you get to yell at us and be like, hey, you guys are doing a bad <laughs> job, but it's okay. Whenever the good stuff happens, then we get thanked, but I want to make sure that the production are getting their fair credit as well because, man, production, observers, replays, they don't get enough love all around. So this one's for you. Oh, yeah. 
We love our producers here at Play Versus, and I'm loving this draft as well. Uh, like you said, the the champions can go to multiple different places. We do finally see that for La Quinta, it is going to be the set in the top lane, Nocturne Jungle, and that Galio was not flexed to mid lane either. So that's going to be the support Galio. We only get that one repeat in the set top. Everyone else is playing a different champion. So with that comes really different play styles right now, Rafa. And for La Quinta, I would say that they actually do have a little bit more scaling on this team. Rise really enjoys playing into a game like this where a lot of these champions are going to be running directly into you. A full melee topside. Samira is pretty melee as well on the AD carry. So this champion is going to have a field day dealing all that damage with the bounces. Tristana is going to have to be relying on burst damage coming from that Rise and that Nocturne, assuming that this is a more damage-oriented Nocturne instead of a Bruiser or off-tank Nocturne. Because in order for Tristana to really excel in those team fights, as you pointed out, Smax, is you got to get that burst damage in, so then you get one reset after another, and you'll be able to reposition yourself with that rocket jump. But when you're looking on the flip side, you have a very volatile composition, all thanks to this Samira, who... If she gets those style points racked up, and then she just comes in with that ultimate ability, and she is a whirling ball of death. Literally, Smash. Yes, actually literally there, Rafa. I am super excited to see some action on Samira. This has been one of my favorite champions this season, and climbing the ranks with her myself. Uh, the coolest thing about Samira, with the new changes, is that they they still kept a lot of the same team fight power in this champion however you can't dash to you can't dash to allies anymore you have to go in mm, so what that really true. has done is made it so she has to fight a little bit slower you have to make sure that you stack up your style and right away so you're not just completely diving in and then you've got nowhere to go you can't land your ultimate and you can't dash on out of there so with champions that back her up like this Nautilus, like the Skarner, and even Urgot as well, he's got a flip over his shoulder. You can proc your passive off of that as well. These champions do really do a very nice job of being dive buddies with Samira and starting off the fight on equal footing. So if I'm Samira in this composition, I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling like in 1v9 the game right now. So I'm really liking the way that this composition has been drafted for that champion in mind. And it was last pick for a reason here, Rafa. This is the perfect Exodia counter pick for this squad of Sunny Hills. <laughs> I mean, one thing that we can't count out here is the powerful point and click ability tools that we have from side of sunny hills you have that impale from skarner you have the death charge from nautilus as well you're able to find a priority target even as someone as slippery as trisana being able to bust your shot her enemies away from her or even rocket jumping to safety if you get impaled you get death charge you, you can't avoid that it, it it's coming and it'll, it'll happen in an instant and so at that point if you're getting death charged, you just got to wait it out and hopefully you've created enough distance for yourself before it reaches you for the knockup. Or if the impale got you, hope you hope you buy a QSS. The taxes <laughs> are coming to get you and you, you better pay up that 1300 gold early on. Otherwise, you're going to be susceptible to some powerful Skarner ganks. Yeah. QSS is really valuable in this game. I'm picturing that item being built by a number of these members maybe even rise maybe even wood player is going to be buying one of those for himself mm. because the extra magic resist is good against akali and the cleanse is good against well pretty much everybody else in this game you can get rid of that impale and if skarner's dead you can get rid of some of that ergos crowd control as well so things like the fear the flip can be really good to remove from yourself and so you can run away from that guy because I don't want to be anywhere near Urgot. It's like the the, yeah. the Grinch song. I would not touch that guy with a, what is it, 59 and a half foot pole? Something like that. 39. 39. 39. I was close. And a half foot pole. But, you know. 39 is too close off. for me. I'm going to 59. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that works. That works. I believe the QSS also works on the fear beyond death from Urgot once you start getting pulled in because... Mm. Normally, with the interaction with Gangplank in that matchup, and the reason why that works so well, you hold on to the oranges, and then whenever he tries to execute you, you pop Come some on. oranges in your mouth, and then boom, you're no longer getting pulled into the grinder, and then uh, you don't have to become a Gangplank burger. And th that might be the case here as well if any of these champions buy and invest into a QSS early on. We should be getting onto the rift sometime soon. Just to remind all the folks at home, this is match point for La Quinta High School. 
against defending champions in Sunny Hills High. The Lancers have to be able to win this game in order to bring it to a final game three if they want a chance of reverse sweeping. Coming back against La Quinta. Otherwise, if La Quinta have the right moves, they're just going to close it, close it out, win the championship, and call it a day. We've already seen two game threes in the past couple of days here, Rafa. Sunny Hill have the opportunity to bring us to another one of those as we get another nice zoom in on the ducky. There's a dragonfly there, too. Summoner's Rift teeming with life, as there's also a, a an astronaut in the ocean right there. It is beautiful. Life is beautiful, Smacks. What's what that? is that? Is that a minion making stew? It is. You know, it being near the river creates a lot of humidity, right? And if it's a cool, breezy day, then it's going to be even colder. So having some nice hot soup to, chill, to warm yourself up on a cool, chilly day here on the Rifts of Runeterra. Might be what uh, would be enjoyable. Ooh, the frog. Fact, what, what's your favorite soup, Smacks? Oh, no. We have to watch the frog do this. Wait, hold on. Oh, he's a frog. There's also oh, a trade in the top side too. of the map. Yeah, I didn't yeah. that. <laughs> the bigger screen is the top lane fight, and Smacks is like, but I must see this frog. A froggy. It is like Big the Cat. You ever played Sonic the Hedgehog? Ah, uh, which one? The ones with Big the Cat. Uh, I've only played, actually, Sonic Heroes. Ah, well, Big the Cat's in that one. He's on uh, oh. He's on Team Chaotix. Oh, okay, now I know what you're talking about. But he's purple, Sonic right? Heroes. Yeah, he's purple. And all he, all he does is he cares about Froggy. He's a, he's a fisherman, and he's got he's got a friend named Froggy. That's nice. Yep. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Great franchise. Even greater meme. <laughs> I wish I played a little bit more Sonic in the my early childhood. My childhood was more Nintendo focused and yeah. RuneScape. Actually, well, so RuneScape, Age of Empires, and then pretty much all Nintendo. Yep. And Dynasty Warriors as well. That was, I'm that was a Pokemon awesome. kid. Hell yeah. Play a lot of that. I I've been playing the the new Pokemon Snap. Very similar to the old one, but they put in all the new Pokemon. <laughs> that game looks really fun, but... Yeah, it's so cute. You, you, you know, Smacks, I, we'll have to talk about this later, because I, yeah. I, I do believe Jabong is finally, after his full clear, oh making his way onto the top side of the map. Flash Face Breaker from Elated forces Barrack's hand. He's going to have to respond with a flash of his own. Cow Cavalier dedicated to the art of farming their entire jungle, whereas Jabong went for... Red buff into uh, it was actually a three camp clear. Normally, yeah. from Nocturne, you do have the capabilities of full clearing, but making that early priority move does allow them kind of the early agency to go for that crab. But now, Cal Cavalier and Barrack might try to move for just a spire. The crab's already gone. Cal Cavalier yeah. can always can cross map. He already has the help of Ray, ensuring that they can gain access to the other crab. You don't want to get double crabbed early on in the game. And check that out, Rafa. We got to see Jubong making use of the new smite change. You can smite the crab to get, ri get rid of its shield and clear it nearly instantly on spawn. He saves his smite for that camp. It's to go back to clearing his own. He's going for an invade now. He's denied himself of all of his bot side camps. Actually going to be a nice invade from Cow Cavalier. Doesn't have time to take the spire, but... Taking the Raptor camp is going to be well worth his time over there. And in fact, Jubong's not interested in camps at all. He's going to make a repeat gank up there on Barrack. Ooh, nice ward, though. Does deny that one. Barrack gets to keep his life. All this attention towards the top side is going to be felt as Elated has the makings of potentially a freeze, but it doesn't seem like with the wave now pushing Ooh. all but Elated. Managing to pull Barrack right back into the fray. And now Jabong flashing forward to ensuring that they can get the fear down. Barrack has nowhere else to run. That's first blood for La Quinta. That's a nice play right there. The repeat ganks. Smooth as butter, Rafa. It's exactly what you want to do on the jungle. Make sure you get this flash out. Blow all of the defensive summoner spells. And then just go right back there and do it again. Finding first blood. Has to flash, though, to get in range and save Elated. Because it turns out Urgot deals a lot of damage if you get in range. 
is that range champion, but really does appreciate being in melee right there. So it's going to be essential to get the flash in. But still, really nice play up there. And this is exactly what we saw out of La Quinta in the previous game on the Volley Bear for Jibong. Do the same thing on Nocturne. Cal Cavalier taking this opportunity with all the focus towards the top side of the map against Barrett. We'll be able to pick up the first dragon of the game. It is Cloud, so potential souls are going to be Infernal or Mountain now with the spawn of that second dragon being an ocean one. Mountain Dragon could be pretty pretty nice for either team. You have you don't really have any true tanks apart from the supports. But if you get a Mountain Soul, and then more than likely Jabong and Elated, same with Barrack and Cow Cavalier, are going to be building full tank items after their first Mythic. Having that those extra resistances built in will make it harder for Soon Chang and Muffin, respectively, to try and take oh. them down in later team fights. Okay, disconnect. Uh oh. Oh no. Well, Ray goes down to Muffin. Exhaust comes out on the Soon Chang, and Rock Jump is enough. Should be able to take him down. But yeah, Smax, uh, that was odd. It was quite odd indeed. Does look like Ray is moving now, but I just sort of stood still in that lane. Does get dropped there. It's now three kills to zero for La Quinta. It's not going to feel great. And. G-Bang didn't even have to participate in those ones either. It's just a 2v2 for Muffin and Monami. Although, we, we did get to see the power of the Galio Tristana combination right there. These champions can be very deadly when going in for those engages. Tristana resets are huge. Galio damage and crowd control is huge, and they got to keep their flashes all the while. Actually, get to see Ray solo denying away this blue buff. That's pretty funny. Hell Kyle Kevlar yeah. wasn't even there. Jabong was a little too frightened. Didn't have Smite either, so cannot secure that one away. And obviously, if you try to tango with the Nautilus too long, the bot lane from La Quinta is not there to support the invade. There's always the chance that Soon Chang roams and collapses on the Jibong, who doesn't have Flash after the gank onto the top side of the map just a couple or a few minutes ago. Could have been disastrous. That is the correct play for sure. And now we have a blue buff Nautilus, but for Muffin and Monami, if they're feeling if they're feeling confident, they might go for another all-in, knowing that they won the last time around. Extra pickaxe there too. It's a lot of damage. 25 extra AD for Muffin. It's gonna feel pretty good. I believe they also hit level six pretty soon. You can see Soon Chang. All it would take is a couple more minions to do that himself, so it's not gonna gonna matter too too much who hits level six first i would imagine especially not for monami whose galio ultimate doesn't really impact his own lane that much seeing across the map though cal cavalier it's actually only one camp up despite jibong having the having been the victim of a couple of really nice invades but both of them are now level six which is the really important part of this game they both have access to their huge impact ultimates if you ever Speaking see the of. screen go a little bit dark, that's Nocturne. I mean, for Nocturne, yes. It could also go Grayscale if you're against Cow Cavalier, who is chilling in the bottom side of the map, waiting with that Impale, has Flash. Muffin also has Flash as well, along with Buster Shot, so it would require the members of La Quinta bot lane to be quite overextended to make this gank work. Slowly... Pushing away. Cal Cavalier did wait quite quite a substantial amount of time before finally saying this skank is not coming anytime soon. Clears out the Grom. Now there's an engage. And it's Ooh. potential. Oh, but they're just gonna it's gonna be La Quinta making the first moves on the bottom side of the map, but that turn drive might be enough. Ray Ooh. gets the last killing blow on the Jabal. Ooh. And Sun Chang with the ultimate ability forces Muffin's hand. He has to run away, and the Impale finally comes in as Cal Cavalier comes with the counter game, but it's a double TP answer, oh. and a one player flash forward, picks up Soon Chang, taunt on the Cal Cavalier, will lock him down and lay the case down with a showstopper. 
Man, the double teleports, the teamwork from La Quinta. That is a five player play on the bot side of the map. They do end up losing their jungler, so it might be a little tricky to secure this Drake, but it's not up for a while. They don't have to care about that one too, too much. They got a bunch of kills on that bot side, Rafa. You can see Barrack and Jenny didn't have their teleports to match this at all, so they had all the confidence in the world to go for this one right here. Nocturnal in. The flash away right there does keep that alive. Got to see that one end up being a return kill so far, but the jump resets were enough for Muffin to jump in, jump out, all the confidence in the world. And Monami actually doesn't tank the turret aggro here. Sun Cheng walks out of the queue because he would have died otherwise. And there are the teleports as well. All across the world, La Quinta has arrived. They even used the set ultimate at the end there too. La Quinta looked disastrous with that first set of the dive coming in from Jibong, but then the double teleports being expended, knowing that they actually had a window both on Jenny and Merrick, which is why that play was possible in the first place there for them to make. It does extend their gold lead just above 2,500. Sunny High, not not out of the game quite yet, but you do need to make sure that this Samir does come online and with the quite a bit of the focus that La Quinta has put down into the bottom side of the map recently, it does put a little bit of a dent in that ability for the Samir to come online into this game. That makes me sad. I want to see some Samira pop-offs right now, but <laughs> Muffin and Monami are just playing this lane super, super well. You can see the Monami even has a shutdown over his head. This is a support Galio with two kills. Putting in a lot of work right now. He's going to be making his way toward the mythic item. Probably, I would guess, is the locket. Can still be Shirelia's, but don't provide that Shirelia's many shields. would be lit, bro. And just imagine... Oh, wait, you provide shields on your ult, don't you? Mm, yeah, yeah, The tech. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mona I think Shirelia's... Yeah, Shirelia's sounds kind of nice. Especially if uh, you have... Fly... Just... Imagine this, Max. Picture. Okay. You got picture. you got Galio, mon ami, the French suave master himself, saying, you know what? I've got Flash, I got Shirelias, and so you pop the Shirelias, and you, you're zooming forward, and then you flash and you channel the taunt, and then boom, ha ha what do they do? They they can't respond. Uh, you you, ha you have covered so much distance in the blink of an eye. It's very hard to react. I think the response probably sounds something like this. <laughs> There's a guy <laughs> on me. What do I do? <laughs> you know, I I, I, I I don't know if that is everyone's response. Usually it's like, oh, shit, man. Oh, no. We're dead. You know, right? It's one of those things. Because in, in game, normally, I don't think, especially in a championship finals, players react by by emotions but uh it could be uh it could be just Ooh. pure like oh no speaking of oh no screens have gone dark nocturnal ulti has been used but they answer back because jenny has come in with the perfect execution a lady trying to bring him under the tower with the showstopper forcing jenny's hand the flash comes out as well gonna be able to escape but still has quite a substantial amount of hp if they want to push in this wave with elated cal cavalier also here for the party and he's got an impale with elated Whoa. name right under it but i don't even think they need it what wait a flash comes in but barrack does take a little too many turret shots will go down jabon will be able to pick up the wave sunny hills i love love the response okay rafa i need to point something out we gotta we gotta watch that one again because the most ridiculous play I've ever seen in my life actually just happened in this play. I'm gonna point it out to you once we once we get to watch it again. But actually, it looks like fighting in the bot side. Okay, I think Monomi gets to walk out of this one. There is a depth charge. Okay, here we go. All right, watch this. Let's let's slow this down really really bad. Okay, elated. He's here. He's in this fight. Nocturnal's here. The teleport still is in time. Before the Nocturne ult fully sets in place, Jenny makes it. 
That's incredible. That is so insane. Because you can't teleport when the Nocturne Ultimate is in place. Jenny had the reaction time and the prediction to use it in the right lane. Song comes out though. We got a bot lane skirmish here, but they turn around soon, Chang. 2v3, by the way. The teleport Ooh. didn't even come in. Oh, and Barrack with a beautiful snipe. Just a couple more auto attacks. Should do the jig. Jabong, able to flash away. We'll be able to escape the fear beyond death. Barrack doesn't pick it up. A flash in exchange for the ultimate. Will be taken. And Sunny Hills. Response after response. They're coming back into this game here, Smax. Nice teleport there from Barrack. They do get the kill onto Monami, but. Look up in this top side right now, elated. He's going to take first turret off the map. That is now a 2,000 gold lead continuing for La Quinta in this game. A really big deal. It is a kill traded on over, but that's a nice chunk of gold in response. We get to see this one yet again. Trying to get under the turret, but the crowd control Three is just man gigantic. Death charge, by the way. Beautiful. Yeah. They all lined up for it as well. That's one of those plays where it feels so good to be Samir as well, when your support is just landing and popping up all the crowd control. Here it is again. And they're doing it again. Impale after the land, the dredge line from Nautilus. Monami is down. Aleda comes in with the showstopper, finding Soon Chain, trying to buy as much time as they can for the rest of the players. A muffin and wood player to come in. Turn the tides of the battle. Soon Chain going in once again with the ultimate. Look at the Ooh. life steal. It's enough to take down Aleda, but Muffin is able to clean it up. Sunny Hills. Or something high, I should say. Not able to necessarily win the fight. It's more of like a stalemate. But Cal Cavalier being the jungler alive means that there is potentially a chance to take this dragon. But NA Wood Player Muffin are not going to allow them to do it freely. Jenny in position, though. Perfect execution is here. Can't be too risky about this. Wood Player. Trying to find the angle on the Cow Cavalier, but again, you just cannot invade, you cannot invade with an Akali standing right there. The teleport might make, make him more confident, though. It's going to be all the members of Sunny Hills here, fight. though. The death timers are so short. Elated. Stride breakering in for the face breaker. Jenny goes in. Perfect execution. Lands onto a couple players. And a whip player still not quite dead yet. Hero's entrance is going to provide a knockup, displacing all the members away from Sunny Hill. And a whip player takes down Jenny, though. Oh! But the, oh! Beautiful interrupt from La Quinta. They stop him in his tracks. And a whip player picks up a triple. But will give his life as Barrett picks up a triple as well in response. The dragon secured by La Quinta before the fight started out. But man, smack. Can you believe? That was essentially a fight and another fight back to back. Oh yeah, we get to watch the beginning of this one. The big ultimates are expended on the initial fight. That's gonna be the Skarner Impale and the Nocturne Paranoia. Both of those were used. Perfect Execution though, was not used. Neither was Fear Beyond Death. And of course, Soon Chang gets to ult immediately after this as well when he comes back because Samira's ultimate is an eight second cooldown. You just get to use it again. But as we get to zoom back in on the second play, we get to watch NA Wood Player and Muffin clear out this vision. They do set up for their team to secure this Drake. This next fight is just triple kill galore, as it turns out. This is... I want to look at NA Wood Player in this fight, because we get to see just how much damage Arise actually can do. He's in the middle of everyone. He's taking shots from all around. Thinks about using his own portal to get out of that situation, but... He still knows he needs to be dealing all of this damage to that front line to make sure that it is a trade of fights. It's a trade of triple kills in the end as well. You can see at the bottom of your screen, too. Three for Urgot, three for Rise. That ricochet was nuts, actually. The oh, yeah. bounce off with the spell flux. I think you got like two, was it 264 on the empowered bounces of the. Oh, man. Big numbers. Nutties. Big numbers, boys. Big numbers. Tears not even completed yet for the Saracen Brace, or uh, I should say the, the Saracen Brace has not been completed yet by an NA Wood player. They're already putting out that level of damage. Once that's completed, oh man. I mean, you've seen Joshi play Rise. You've seen yourself play Rise as well. It's, it can get Joshi, pretty disgusting. Joshi's not even the best Joe player I've seen play Rise. You talk about Jojo Pyung. Oh, true. Shout outs to, uh, Evil Geniuses Academy. As we're gonna get another fight for this Rift Herald before the Baron spawns. Sunny Hills with Jenny trying to make 
this teleport happen. Nocturne with the ulti. Gonna turn out the lights here. Jenny taking a lot of damage. Is gonna Ooh. face the end of this world. Ooh. Nothing muffin went on the rampage. But Barrick be able to answer one when response. Look at the Infernal Trickle though. The Wild Rush. Soon Chang on the aggression is able to wipe through the members of La Quinta. Ooh. And it's just elated. The last man standing for, for Blue Team. But it's not enough. And Baron is now spawned. And they're just they're gonna try to take it down. Oh, this is where Samira gets to pop off, Rafa. I'm getting excited about this. Soon Chang making all these plays. And Jenny gets to start it off as well as the sort of diversion Akali. We get to see it yet again. The early teleport. So crucial against Nocturne to get that teleport in. This time, it's a little bit easier to do because he does it early. But you can see this flank position is just so clutch. It's to dive in with perfect execution. He knows that the team is going to back him up. And watch Soon Chang in the rest of this fight, too. He gets Set ulted. But Set is not the only champion right here. Or Set is the only champion that's going for him. He's not the, the end-all be-all when it comes to damage. He can't solo kill anyone. Except for Ray, but Ray's support, and Ray gets to flash out of that one too. So Soon Chang gets to be a complete menace, resetting the dashes through, getting that Inferno trigger. Now four kills in the Samira. They've got the bear, they've got the gold lead all of a sudden, and Sunny Hill, they might keep the tradition alive, Rafa. This might be the beginning of that game three. The Lancers saying to La Quinta, and hey, you know what? Your regular season, undefeated, pretty impressive. Playoff season, only dropping one game. Also impressive, but we're the defending champions. You can't take this title that easily. And soon Chang, in that first game on the Kog'Maw, tried to do his best. Now's looking to up the ante with this Samira. That Lord Dominic's regards being completed on second item. I know you're a big fan. Mm -hmm. Very powerful power spike here. Should be shredding through all the armor and the bonus HP stacking. That's going to be coming in through for Elated and Jabon. His third or fourth dragon of the game. Now live. I don't think. I don't think La Quinta can really contest. I don't think so at all. Baron is still available for about another minute. So still just a ton of pressure can be exerted across the map. Quinta need to take this opportunity to push out these minion waves so they don't lose any more structures when the Baron, or when the Drake is done, rather. But does mean that Sunny Hill now have access to that third Drake. The next one in five minutes will give them a ton of extra combat stats like you were talking about before. Mountain Drakes stacking up can be a really big deal when it comes to the durability of your entire squad. And then once you get that fourth one, the extra Malphite shield can be a really big deal. So moving forward, looking to just have to worry about that one. And they have to worry about this bot side turret too, but it's just an outer turret. That's not the end of the world. It's expected. The enemy team has a Baron. Sunny Hill, though, taking that one down is going to be nice for their gold. Speaking of gold, this is the first time I believe we've seen Sunny Hills with the gold lead in yep. this second game of the series. They are one dragon away from Mountain Soul. Or they're at soul point, I should say. Many item completions have come on through for top side of the map as well. Titanic Hydra, Dead Man's Plate, Barrack and Cow Cavalier, respectively. They're getting beefier smacks. Yep. And with that, Mountain Dragon, the extra resistances makes it that much more difficult to, to take down. Especially for La Quinta, who, whose mark, main marksman, Muffin. Went for a Phantom Dancer second. Doesn't have that Lord Dominic's regard, so the extra armor that Sunny Hills do have is going to be pretty hard to cut through. As I mentioned, Muffin was forced to pay the Skarner tax. Has spent 1,300 gold into a QSS. Something like Wood Player might have realized that he needs to do the same. Maybe even Mona Me. They've got some Null Magic Mantles to potentially purchase the QSS with later. I'd like to see that as well, because it would make these team fights a little bit easier for them. They can use those at a timely manner, or just having them in general make sure that Cal Cavalier has to think a little bit more about who he is landing that impale on. Does have it available right now. Well, thinking about where Sunny Hills need to lay their claim on the rift. Baron's expired, has been for a while now. 
might be the next Baron fight that just decides this entire game because that last one was just a massive gold swing for Sunny Hill. They win another one in a row. Then the lead just becomes completely insurmountable. You got to feel if they can find another angle for Sun Chang to deal a gigantic amount of damage. If maybe he can purchase that Infinity Edge before it too, then the burst just becomes out of this world for Samira. And you can apply that to the entire enemy team. Two minutes on the dragon. No real need to fight for an objective anytime soon. It's all about fighting for mid priority. Being able to be the first one to get that wave shoved in. And establish vision control. Either sweep out any current enemy vision that remains in the river and the entrances to that dragon, or place some vision of your own. Vision game is going to be a really big deal. Baron is going to be up really soon. You can see that hourglass right there over the pit. It's coming. It's coming, Rafa. We're going to be getting yet another one of these fights. About to be 26 minutes into this game. A little bit quicker, I would say, than the previous one. We've got a lot of kills in this game, uh, but we don't have the, uh, <laughs> the ward stones for the support, so we're not quite as late. <laughs> That's in it's... another 10 minutes, Max. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still can't yeah, believe I think... we've seen one of those. It's like the rarest item in the entire game, I'm telling you. I'm not going to lie, Max. I forgot that that item existed until yeah, you mentioned everyone it. Yeah, like, does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're one telling me you got to get your support to level 13 and mm -hmm. you have to spend 1,100 gold to get this? What? Who could ever possibly buy this? <laughs> anyway. There's a, there's, there's a very very vital ward for Sunny Hills on the bottom side of the map in the tri-bush in the entrance towards the dragon pit. Note, note that Barrack and Jenny both have teleports. Oh, never mind. Well, my point is gone. Uh, they they uh, put another control ward down into the <laughs> red buff entrance into the dragon. This is also interesting, though. La Quinta could go for a flip here saying, hey, you know what? Getting some Baron control could say we give a mountain soul to try and rush down the baron i don't think that's necessarily the best trade deal but having vision of both objectives seems to be what la quinta want to go for but sunny hills so far like i mean la quinta are nowhere near this dragon so there's they're i guess they're content on saying you know what we're gonna give a mountain soul let's try to rush down this baron before they have a chance to respond and the problem is that Sunny Hills don't have to commit their entire team to the Drake to kill it. It's a much easier objective to take down, and that's exactly mm. what they do. La Quinta have to run away. They've been completely routed. They cannot take a fight. They couldn't take a fight before the Mountain Soul came through, but now they've got to tread through all of these shields. Now Sun Chang, which is the member that they need to take down, is even more difficult to kill. He even has that Infinity Edge online. So these fights becomes so, so dangerous to take. Sunny Hill just get to have that inside track. They take that mid lane turret. They get to push in yet another wave and they just get to start up on this right away with the Skarner Spire. It's up to G Bang to maybe ult in and steal this one away, but the vision is limited. Almost 4,000 on the health. Jenny's gonna try to buy some time. Baron has been secured by Sunny Hills. Well, I mean, popping the Shirelius, trying to give La Quinta a nice route of escape. Jenny pops the uh, last cast of the perfect execution. No longer available for a couple of minutes, but for Sunny Hills, I mean, we, we look back on the past two minutes that just occurred, it, it seemed like it was just for free. La Quinta, either did, the, the nerves are getting to them or just didn't have any viable way of being able to fight for vision control on the dragon. But if you're going to commit to Baron and trade for Mountain Soul, you have to be quicker on the, the spot. The finals. Stakes are high, Smacks. You can tell how it's reflecting the play. Sunny Hills with the momentum shift. Defending champions starting to look kind of strong and being able to close out this game. The time to remind everyone that they have been the defending champions for almost two years now. That is uh, a title stretched across two different decades in time. The 2010s and the 2020s. They're looking to keep that one. <laughs> just about just barely, like... but it counts. Yeah, I was about to say, like, wait, whoa, 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 wait, how, how is that possible? <laughs> it's a technicality, but you know yeah, what? It sounds technic nice on a resume. You know what? Nice. Nicely done. I appreciate that. 
Hills. You know what else sounds nice is this game for them right now. They are mm -hmm. hugely in the lead all of a sudden, and they they had to claw their way back into this one. The fights were looking really tricky, but now La Quinta are in a position where even the thought of a fight is scaring them. They're not even going to try to engage on anything at this time. They're still trying to get some more items onto this Rise, onto this Tristana, to maybe out-hyperscale the opponents, but problem is they've spent about 4,000 of that gold into just dealing with one Skarner ability. QSS tax, it's different, man. It's something that has slowed down the acceleration of La Quinta's scaling. Sunny Hills high. This is now a window and opportunity to be able to close out the game where you have a Samira. Three items strong. Stopwatch available as well to provide a moment of invulnerability. It's gonna be waiting on this next wave here though, Smax. You already have Jenny on the other side of the map as well, making a cross push against the Lated. Teleports are all available for every solo laner in the game. All right, 31 minutes in. All these ultimates are available. All the flashes are available. For La Quinta, they have really only one last stand. If they can win this fight, they might be able to claw their way back into it, but problem is, they lose it. That's just the game right there. And if they don't do anything, then the Baron minions are going to come clobbering onto their base, onto their nexus. And that just explodes, and then you lose that way too. Options are limited. Thankfully for La Quinta, it seems that the wave clear is enough to stifle the the Siege of Sunny Hills High. That is the one difficulty about operating a Siege with Samira. She is relatively short range. Hmm. Not like Tristana who gains bonus range on top of the already, I believe it's what, you start with 550 range at the beginning of the game. Don't make That's me do math right. on air, Rafa. I will, I will <laughs> not be able to do it. <laughs> You're my color caster. What, what else am I supposed to ask you questions for? I don't know. Not math. <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> the point is the Muffin has a lot of range. And it's yes. bigger than Samira. That much is true. And you know what else is true? Is that the Elder Dragon is spawning. So uh -oh. maybe this is this is what the plan was from the beginning. Alright. Hear me out, Rafa. La Quinta, they didn't want to take any of these fights because they knew that it wouldn't have mattered too much and they might have just lost it anyway. However, if they can steal away the Elder Dragon, then that would be enough damage to get through the Mountain Dragon and potentially win the game off of mm. Elder Dragon. Mm. I'm stroking whatever bits of facial hair I have. The very mm -hmm. faint stubble I will join I have. you. Mm. Mm. Your face feels nice. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that's not the response I was expecting. But uh, uh, thanks, Max. Um, I don't know how you're able to, to tell that across multiple states, but you are correct. Oh. I've been using skincare. Oh, Jenny put the flash forward on the muffin. Stopwatch trying to buy some time, and here comes the rest of the reinforcements with Sunny Hills High. They want to end this game right here, right now. If they can get the killing blow on the Muffin, Inferno Shirker comes out. Soon Chang, that's the one stopwatch. Do La Quinta have what it takes to be able to turn around oh. with the Fear Beyond Death and lands the two bad. Oh, Fear. Oh, wait, but Elated? He's still resurrected, but it's not going to be enough. And they would play Muffin. They're going to have the fight three against in, but the Inferno Trigger from Soon Chang wipes them out. The teleports are coming in, and they're going to end the game, and we're going to game three. That's going to be it, Rafa. Soon Chang popping off on the Samira with the triple kill to close it out. Teleports galore into the base. No need for the Elder Dragon. There are no champions left alive on this rift, Sunny Hill. They keep that tradition up. We're going all the way to a game three, and they might be in for a reverse sweep. The defending champions not going down without a fight here, Smacks. And I don't want to say anything, but the past two play versus high school championship games finals have all gone to a game three. And 
I, I think both of them were also reverse sweeps as well. So, I, I, I mean, a, according to the script, Sunny Hills High are just doing their due diligence. I don't want to say La Quinta are down and out, but this last fight, just watch. Watch soon, Chang, man. Teleports come through there from Elated, trying to get the front line through, but there's one Samir ult. There is a stasis as well, flashing away. Oh, man. And then he just gets to dive right in and just ult it all again. Champion, this is just so fun. All these dashes. Oh, Wild yeah. rush, baby. Oh, yeah. It, no pun intended, but it's a rush. The other thing, too, Smacks, is that the members of Sunny Hills High did a fantastic job of just peeling threats one after another. You saw the Impale pulling away Mon Ami. You saw, I believe, the Fear Beyond Death getting elated out and ready. And we want to break that fight even more smacks but we got to get ready for game three so folks stay tuned stay strapped to your seats and hold on to your butts we're going to the final game
Ladies and gentlemen, Game 3 has arrived for the Play vs. Spring 2021 CIF Esports Initiative Championship presented by Omen, NVIDIA, HyperX, and United States Marine Corps. Rafa and Smacks, your casters for this broadcast and this epic series. I mean, we saw how incredible Soon Chang was popping off with the Infernal Trigger after getting a little bit of love from the rest of Sunny Hills High School. And now we're here, Smacks. I mean, like... We saw how terrifying La Quinta was in Game 1. Sunny Hills bounced back in Game 2. And that's Max. I, I, I just want to get into draft. Let's get this game going. Yeah, I mean, if you're you're a fan of Play versus League of Legends, if you're been, you've been watching this week, you already know. We're at Game 3. That's just how it goes. Right. Even after we got to see that crazy pentakill from La Quinta, you know what? Sunny Hills, they've got more left in the tank. We got to see that one in game number two, Soon Chang on the Samira. One of my first favorite champions. Got to pop off in that one. And they got to show us some really cool solo lane champions in that one, too. The Urgot, the Akali. Some really fun stuff in those two games. So, uh, in, in game two, rather. So, I'm really excited to see if they've got even more cool champions here. The Skarner and the Urgot will not be available. A lot of champions from just that composition alone taken off the table. And Sunny Hills, respecting the fact that either NA Wood player or related have a pocket of Kali as well. So they don't they don't want to have to deal with it. The Quinta going to stick with the Senna band, though. And the Nocturne now falls into the hands of Sunny Hills. So denying that Nocturne away is going to be... Well, actually, I don't know where that's going to be going. It's a flex pick. You can send that to any of the solo it lanes is. or to the jungle that we got to see from G-Bong last game. So definitely an exciting champion to be picked first. Does leave open some of these super powerful junglers. That Morgana is public uh -oh. enemy number two, actually, because Rumble has already been banned away. But yeah, Morgana coming through. That one's very likely to be going over to G-Bong the Ezreal as well. That's a very peculiar option here. Uh, but this does provide this team with a really nice set of champions that can play from a distance. Safety for Muffin. Allows Monami potentially a little bit more agency to roam freely in that out of that bottom lane. But the Kog'Maw and the Lulu are available. Yep. And you know what, Smax? I saw how well you did a Kog'Ma impersonation, and you told me that the, the tech was some water, right? The gargle? And All right, here we go. Tech. All right, let's see it. And 
Wow. That is that is pretty pretty sick tech. It's pretty good. Hurts a little bit, but thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself too bad. We still got a game to cast right now. Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> Greg is oh, being yeah. locked in for Monami once again, and we know that Monami can make the plays happen. And if he is not tied down to that lane, the roams can be pretty sick. Body slam, flash, explosive casks. So far, I mean, all these champions on the rift against Sunny Hills, or for Sunny Hills, I should say, without Flash, they don't really have any ways of being able to deal with the engaged or the pick tools that uh, Monami's Gragas can offer. Yep. It's going to be against the Kog'Maw Lulu yet again. We saw that that was the tech answer in the previous game, or in game one, rather. It was previous game, but not the previous game. Gragas, uh... Works really well for Monami. It's still a flex pick, but that's definitely where I'm expecting it to go, as it is still a response to that lane. We got to see some really good mechanics on that one, and that was the game that Laquinta actually did win as well. Uh, speaking of things that Laquinta did win on, though, the set is still available. The Orianna mm. for NA Wood player is still available, too, and that one was very impressive. Yep, you gotta ban that one away. No more Oriana for NA Wood player. Did pick up that Pentakill in game one of this series. Seems so long ago, honestly, because all the action that we saw in this final series for the California State Championship title. It was historic. Quinta now. It, that indeed it was. Jace, however, being locked in. I assume this is going over to Elated in the top side. Being paired with the Morgana in the jungle, I wouldn't be surprised if any wood player wants to double down on the physical damage. Make sure that damage profile is nice and evenly spread. Certainly do that. The Orianna's not here. Uh, Rise still is, though, and we got to see a lot of damage being pumped through the enemies from any wood player last game. Maybe just, just wants to change a pace, though, uh, so not certain that he's going to be going to the Rise. He will have his choice of counter pick, though. The Scion is the response to what is likely a Jace top, and that one doesn't have a lot of fun in the lane, but it can be a really good answer for the late Yo! game. Very powerful in that stage of the game. Is this mid Nunu? I, I don't know about mid Nunu. I, I I think this this is just straight up Nunu jungle. Now is it not? We we do have the the uh, the Nunu mid expert on speed dial. You can go ask him right now if we want you want to you want to call up always plan ahead right now yeah it, it we do have that as an option if it is going to be a new new mid probably not though uh is they have swapped it around it is looking like it's gonna be cow cavalier on that champion uh nocturne mid. It's, it's pretty exciting though the other exciting thing though is that na wood player is pulling out the frog in special a nivia in the mid lane here ladies and gentlemen so this means you have very powerful wave clear installing abilities, both between the Glacial Storm from Anivia and the Tormented Soil once it's maxed out from Jibang. So even if the game for some reason goes late, you have ways of being able to stall out the game and find other opportunities, preventing the siege from Sunny Hills. But the scaling factor is still, still kind of in the leeways of Sunny Hills because Soon Chang on the Kog'Maw. We saw how terrifying it could have been in game one had it not been for a clutch shockwave from NA Wood player. Sunny Hills definitely had the makings of being able to close out that first game. Oh, yeah. They've got a really strong front line in this one to back up Kogma. This is one of those compositions where it's very different from the previous Kogma. Like I was saying in the first game's draft, you can either go for a full protect Kogma at all costs, make sure that he's the one dealing damage, or you can go for the threat overload where you have to deal with a lot of other champions and then Kogma. This is more of the former, where you have the Nunu and the Scion as your front line. Nunu can provide Kogma with a lot of attack speed as well. It's a really nice bonus for him too. It's not just Lulu who's giving that to him. So that can feel really good as well. And they, on Sunny Hills, they really don't have a lot of damage other than that. So it really is just going to have to be Soon Chang pumping out all of this damage and it could be the situation where he goes for that same build in Navori Quick Blades, but to me, it definitely feels like that Rage Blade might end up being worthwhile mm. in a game like this. You know, as our colleague Joshi would say about Nocturne, is that, ah, yes, you have hit 25 minutes into the game, so it doesn't, doesn't matter what build you've gone, whether it's 
full lethality or stride breaker into bruiser you no longer do any significant damage in deep yeah. fights just <laughs> it's like rexai same thing with rexai as well so you're absolutely right once it gets to the 25 minute mark and beyond that point it is all down to soon chang to really be the one eviscerating the entire squad of la quinta you're gonna have cow cavalier you're gonna have Sion as well, or Barrick, I should say, standing in front of you, being those bodyguards and providing and creating all that space so that on that Kog'Maw, you are just going and just, just trying to spit down everyone. It's going to be all on teamwork. It's going to be all about communication and making sure that the plays and the crowd control abilities are used in synchronization with those attack time windows for Sunny Hills High. Speaking of uh, Kogma, I am noticing that in the Twitch chat, the poll of which one of us had the better Kogma impression what? is completely tied. It is 50% to 50% currently as we're getting an update from Jacob. Hang on, I I, I gotta pull this up. That Holy is incredible. Moly. Oh, I, <laughs> you I pulled even... ahead by one. Let's oh go! My. Just at the last <laughs> second. <laughs> All right. Mm -mm, All right. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We're vibing. You know what? I I will be gracious. And defeat. I I admit your Kogma impression was in fact better. <laughs> you win it, today. It was it was both good. Here here here. I'll I'll, I'll shake your hand. <laughs> we'll, we'll shake on it. Come on, come okay. On, come on. Uh, let's see. This way. Over here. Reach out for it. There you go. There you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're we're doing the the uh, the sophisticated like. Uh, I'm, I'm grabbing your hand as well. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the things that uh, we try to do in a remote broadcast setting, but you know what? We make it work here. And I'm 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 so grateful that we have tournaments like these, even in the the current global setting that we have to get through together as as one giant community. That we're still we're still making it happen, and we're still providing a space for these talented young players to still compete at the highest level within their region. And this California State Finals has definitely been a hell hell of a sight to see. Game one, game two. Game three is going to absolutely deliver once we get through spectators delay and onto some just rift here smacks. When we're looking at the jungle pathing, I know this is something that we like to focus on a lot because it does kind of have a lot of the determination of how the, the first few minutes of the game do play out. We're having this new new a new another new jungler throughout the entire play <laughs> yes. versus, you know, combine that we a tournament series we've seen, by the way. Nunu has, uh, is a champion that we haven't seen in quite some time, mainly focused on objective control because you have that consume and adding an additional amount of true damage on top of the smite. But with the smite changes, you are able to have a almost 2,000... I, I think it's... If I'm doing About the math there, correctly. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just under 2,000 smite as soon as you are level 9. Because by the time you're level 9, your Q will be maxed out. Your smite will then upgrade it to the 900 smite. So you can go for objectives super early on as this Nunu. In fact, there, there, there could be an opportunity where Baron spawns at 20 minutes and Soon Chang and Cow Cavalier just say, all right, let's do it on spawn. And if you can get Barrick and Jenny and Ray maybe to be on other sides of the map, distracting and holding vision of the rest of La Quinta, you could two man it super easily interesting thing that's going on in the jungle here Rafa is that Zhibong is playing this Morgana the two previous games we saw buff Gromp buff out of him that probably is not what he's going to be able to do on Morgana for being completely honest right here this champion really does want to go for that full clear maybe even take multiple camps at the same time like we saw on Fiddlesticks this is not really a champion that's known for the level three ganks. You can see that Jibong is already considering starting up on the wolves. So I think just in the champion difference alone, Jibong is going to have a vastly different play style in this one. You can't do the same thing that you did on Boldy Bear. Did it on Nocturne as well, which actually did end up working out pretty well up top, but didn't scale nearly as well 
as the Skarner in the last game. But Morgana, pretty, pretty strong when it comes to clearing all those camps. Indeed. Check this out. Morgana is actually starting on the Wolves. So this is going to be able to at level two. This is actually something that I think I told you yesterday. It's like, you know what? You, you can actually go for a Wolf start and then do both your Gromp and Blue buff at the same time at level two. And then you can go over to Raptors and Red, do both of them at the same time, and you have a fairly efficient clear as Morgana. It's pretty nice. Pretty delicious, if I do say so myself. You get to take all these camps at the same time. The Blue Golem and the Frog together. It's got to be an interesting flavor, eating the, the jungle camps. But you know what? Morgana's not even the one who's eating the camps. It's actually Cow Cavalier on Nunu and Willem who is eating those and already taken out the Red and the Raptors up in that top side now. Could potentially be the first jungler to approach top lane in this game. And that's going to be a really big deal because you have one of those lanes where there is a Jace in it and on the other side, it's a scaling tank. But if you can get the Jace behind or make sure that the Scion gets to be even in this lane, that's a gigantic deal. So look for Cow Cavalier to make it up to this lane first. It's exactly what we're going to be seeing as he does have the snowball, he's charging it up. It's the biggest snowball ever! And Elaine is trying to flash away and does escape the range of that snowball. Cow Cavalier has done his work. My job here is done, as he would say. <laughs> Yeah, luckily the minion wave came in just in the nick of time, did tank the snowball. So Cow Cavalier was not able to land that one right there. And it does mean that Jibong actually gets inside track on this crab too. And you can see that he's already been able to take out the raptors. Gonna go right back over to the red buff, take that one too. And Jibong has that early clear lead, but bladed with no flash does mean that the worst is kind of yet to come for this, Jace Rafa. You have to imagine that this... Jace is not going to have a very easy time laning against Scion anymore. That will also be accentuated by the fact that once Barrack picks up the ever-so-devastating combo of Bramble Vest and Plated Steel Caps, mm, yes. Jace uh, doesn't get to do anything in that lane. You, you try to throw auto attacks in, and it's just going to barely do chip damage. You basically have to do 10 times the amount of work that you're already doing as Jace once those items are completed. Just because it's such an effective combo and reducing the amount of harass that Jace normally wants to get. But this is a slow wave that is being made against Barrack. He's sub 350 HP and Jabong is here potentially to set up a dive. It's like, a, like an in infomercial for top lane tanks. Are you a single father trying to just make a living wage in top lane? We have the solution for you. Bramble Vest and Plated Steel Caps will allow you to survive through the toughest of times. <laughs> Alongside that shield, which is pretty nice. And that's uh, that's a special, just for Scion. <laughs> mm. Jabong is investing a lot of time. They're going to spot him out because they don't realize that he's on a ward. Now... I don't know if Barrett can safely interrupt it. Oh my gosh, oh, Jabong really, really wants this. Elated can always teleport back to lane. Minions actually spotted out Jibong and interrupted the recall there. So they found they out know. at the end that they were <laughs> spotted. And now they know that the Drake is all but gone as well. You get to see the Cow Cavalier smite in action. See how much damage this is about to do. Oh, it doesn't layer it quite yet, but it doesn't really need to. It's like comes in afterwards and now they're gonna snowball right into the jungle found jibong oh, jibong has been found but he's got black shield so he won't get knocked up by the big snowball but the pressure from bot lane is enough to deter him from being able to take his favorite fog in that guamp fogs oh woo man i love fogs me too yeah i love cogs fogs. also Pogmaws. Pogma. Mm. You know what? Hey, check this. I, I just realized that Soon Chang actually changed up the skin. Because it's true. Bima. Bima game one. Now it is Pogma. You know, Switching this from a... skin infuriates me to no end. Wait, why like is that? Why? why? It's because they could have named it Dogma. Hmm. But pugs are cuter. 
Oh, oh, uh, dog is just too general. Oh no, good oh. violated. That's yep. first blood. There it is. Wow. The <laughs> repeat gank up there. And this time it's not even from Cow Cavalier. He doesn't even take part in it. It's Jenny who arrives to that lane, gives up a lot of pressure in this mid lane, might give up an entire plate, but it's well worth it to find that first blood over to Barrack. And this is the beginning of the end of what I was talking about here. Elated on this chase, you have to get ahead in the early lane to do much of anything. He gets killed. That's that's the end of it right there. Now feels like Barrack is just going to have an easy, easy time up here. And there's the caveat of Jace. You know, we actually saw a Jace game. I don't, I don't recall if it was the first play versus finals we did or yesterday, but they like set up a tent and they gave that Jace three, three kills before five, five, six minutes. That's the kind of investment you got to make on Jace. You can't just say, oh, well, you know what? He's he's doing well in CS. He's pushing the wave. He's doing good. If you don't punish that tank before it picks up some armor items, uh, the, the Jace's effectiveness in lane doesn't really <laughs> exist yeah. after that point. He scales okay with the new items, but... Yeah, Scion is going to scale better. He's going to have like 3,000 health on two items. And look at this. He's got all the confidence in the world to just run at Elated right now. Got a Blast Cone over now. Uh -oh. Jenny's here again. Yeah, Jenny has been constantly shoving out the wave against NA Whip player and looks for these roams. Paranoia isn't available, but just being able to walk up and throw down the fear is enough to uh -oh. get the flash out of Elated. But Cal Cavalier. Steps a little too far forward on the tower, taking one turret shot too many. Uh oh. They turn around, and now one of me is here. Backfired tremendously hard. And a wood player is going to get yet another plate in the mid lane as well. Cow Cavalier giving over that blue buff. Wait. Whoa. Unstoppable onslaught misses, but. Not the paranoia. It's enough damage to take down a lady, but Monami is here for the counter. I don't know if they have enough damage oh. to deal with the Scion. This Scion is very tanky, and he's got high base damage thanks to that decimating smash. Dubong's gonna have to walk out of this one. Ray coming in with the roam, but NA Whip player finally comes to the fray. Glacial Storm, after the stun for the Flash Frost, is gonna be enough to take him down. And NA Whip player, having the Flash and reposition himself, might be able to walk out, but Barrack. Even in that after death passive, and now we have fought so long, the Cow Cavalier has respawned from death, comes back and joins. But it's just going to be enough to deter La Quinta from any further aggression. Okay, a lot of stuff just happened in that play, Rafa, but one thing is for certain, NA Wood player is feeling great right now. Two solo plates mid lane, picking up a kill, even getting a blue buff during all of that one. It's looking like he might even get yet another plate, but Cal Cavalier has been the second top laner for this entire game. He's not stopping anytime soon. Uh, and a wood player might be in some trouble here. Does have the egg. Elated comes in through. Cal Cavalier was looking for the absolute zero, but gets interrupted. It might have been, once again, a little too far extended. Reinforcements come from <laughs> Fort Laquita once again. And NA Whip player comes back with a full HP bar. Oh, man. Top lane is not the only lane, guys. We can go other places. I must remind you, this is <laughs> not the only place in the entire game. Oh, <laughs> look how far we had to go back on the replay just to encapsulate all of this madness. This was like two minutes ago. There's this is one so of those... much stuff <laughs> going on. This is one of those... It's Max, I, I imagine this is one of, one of those moments where it's like, all right, where are we having dinner again? Oh, top lane? But we had dinner at top lane for the past three days this week already. Can we go somewhere else? Turns out, no, we cannot. We have too many gift cards for top lane. And Cal Cavalier, he, he dies He dies in immediate... I, I want to draw your attention to what's going on in the minimap. He goes immediately... Actually, he doesn't immediately go up there. He's taking a look on Raptors. He gets to hit Raptors for a second before he even comes up here. <laughs> That's astounding. I was ready to say that he just came up right away because he knows where the party is, but he, he had a second thought. Sparrow gets dropped. That's the blue buff going over to Wood Player. That's a really big deal for Anivia. 
You have to hold on to that Glacial Storm almost forever in these yeah. fights. And this is the point where Cal Cavalier, after dying to turret, makes his way back to the party. And then <laughs> they, they stay. Recalls yep. come out briefly, and then it's just like, wait, 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 no, no, no. He's pushing in this wave. Okay, Cal Cavalier thinks, you know what? We can get this guy. I got this. Snowball rolling in. I was a little nervous that Monami didn't tank the Snowball. I thought that would have been more of the homey approach to make sure that NA Wood player doesn't die here. But they were confident. They bought enough time. They baited Cal Cavalier into extending quite a bit into No Man's Land. And our production team... Oh, oh crap! Elated with the He's Ignite! Dead. Oh my god! You know how Orn could do that with Unsealed Spellbook? As soon as you get Ignite, you just solo someone with ulti? Yep. Sion just did that. Same thing. He already has his Mythic completed because of all the kills that have happened up in that top side of this game right now. Uh -oh. Watch out, Wood! Oh, but... Whoa, and a Wood player! 200 IQ with the, the wall! Oh. Unfortunately, it's not enough, though, because he still goes down. So much damage coming through. But Monami is able to trade one back on to Ray. Man. I, I know he died, but that was still pretty sick. Considering that Wood player's vision was turned out, as soon as the lights went out, he immediately know, oh, they're probably coming in with a snowball through that top choke. Puts the wall yeah. down, make sure that the snowball didn't come through. That's nice. That is some good heads up thinking right there from NA Wood player. Does end up dying in the end, but still gonna feel really good. Now, bot is the new top, Rafa. Everybody's down here. Ouch. Everyone just wants to party with each other. I can't blame him. This is a this is a good day, good day to party. Yeah. Related, we get to watch him solo die to the Scion, flashing forward. Oh. Not my even giving God. him any any, uh, any time to react to the Scion ultimate. Usually you're like choo choo. Oh, I better get out of here. No. By the set by the time the second chew is out, he's already dead. <laughs> I don't even know if that that chew was out. Look at that. Just still still. Enough damage, though, from Sunny Hills to be able to annihilate any nice player, girl. but... Beautiful response from Monami. The gold lead is dead even, Smacks. Or just yep. about dead even. This is the closest game that we've had so far, and... Rightfully so! This is the last game of the series. The winner takes home the championship title. You have defending champions in Sunny Hills. Going up against La Quinta, who are kind of the Cinderella story heroes, trying to make that miracle run against the defending champions. Oh and Elated might have found himself a little overextended. Damage check. Let's check out if Jenny has enough damage in the tank to be able to deal with this Jace. Flash comes out, but accelerates Shock Blast through that gate. Deters Jenny. And he still had the Flash, but choosing to take the minor lead of forcing Elated to Flash instead in response. Actually, I'm gonna stick around. Nocturne has a lot of sustain on these minions, though, and gets to clear out the wave really, really fast. So, Jenny, no mana. Let's just take that cannon wave. That's gonna feel pretty alright. Across the map, though, I do want to pay a little bit of attention to these 80 carry players, because Muffin already has this Essence Reaver, stacking up the tier as well. It's going to be a threatening Ezreal eventually, even though he hasn't really been on our screens much at all. Neither has Soon Chang, which I assume he's about to have his Kraken Slayer as well. That's why he's trying to recall, I would imagine. But can't do it. Needs to stay in this wave, making sure that the turret does not go down. These AD carries are still going to be threatening, even though they haven't really participated in anything. Uh-oh. It's up a onslaught. Snowball as well, but it's a nice black shield from Jibong. Make sure that Monami doesn't get knocked up by any of the crowd control abilities being thrown out. Ooh. That's two ultimates being used, but a flash re-engaged from Cow Cavalier. Glacial Storm stops them in its tracks. The wall. Going to deter Cow Cavalier on his exit route. Jenny still has Paranoia available. He's thinking about it. You can see the way they're positioned over the wall. Looking for either any wood player or Muffin. Breaks up, Rafa. Sunny Hills already have two of them on lock. Need one more. Get that soul point. Let's see oh, if I can just do look it how right much here. work, though, the Glacial Storm is doing. Paranoia comes out. They find the target onto the front line. Jenny has eliminated Elated. The Glacial Storm is still enough to deter them. 
Soul Shackles Ooh. from Jabong was used, but it's not enough to deter the rest of the members of Sunny Hills, but every time they fight forward, the Glacial Storm comes out, and look at the health bars. They are so very low. True Shot Barrage Ooh. comes through. Soon Chang trying to flash away from it, still takes the damage on the back end, but finally takes one damage to take too many, but any wood player has run out of mana. There's no way that they Wait. can stay longer in this fight. Jenny's Wait. trying to flash forward, trying to run him down. Wait a minute, look at Muffin though, cleaning up the rest of the fight. It's a triple, looking for one more. Oh. He's able to get a range, fires the Mystic Shot, and any wood player will be saved. Holy moly. Muffin, that was absolutely ridiculous. A quadra kill. After all of his team is dead, his Anivia is egged. He's the only one remaining. Watch what all of this damage he's able to do. This has got to be like a 6,000 damage Ezreal team fight right here. He only has one item. He lands so many skill shots. If this was laser tag, he'd have three times the amount of points as anyone else, Rafa. Look at this. This true shot barrage was also nasty. The fact that it's it's... If he was level 11, that kills two people right there. I don't think he missed a single Q the whole time. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping count. That's 10. That's 11. 12. This is 13. 14. 14 15. He hit 14 straight Qs. Damn, Muffin. Stepping up huge, and seems like we do have a pause. Unfortunately, anticlimactic after such a hell of a brawl in that <laughs> in that river <laughs> there. The third dragon did go over to Sunny Hill, so now they are on soul point. But for La Quinta, seeing that massive influx of gold surely should allow Muffin to complete the Muramana. And maybe make his way towards that third item. Um, at this point, are we seeing a Duskblade of Drakthar, Smax? Or are we seeing a different mythic item of choice? Uh, I feel like Duskblade is sort of one of the only options you can go for when you go for Essence Reaver. Because the other choices are the Divine Sunder and Trinity Forest. But both of those have the Sheen attached to it. So I mm. don't think you can go for either of those. Um, at that point... If you're not looking to go for lethality, you're maybe doing something like an Immortal Shield Bow, which is okay. You do get some nice stats for Ezreal, but you don't really use the crit all that much. So I feel mm -hmm. like it is probably going to be a good Duskblade of Drakthar game. The only problem is that there is a Scion and a Nunu on the other team. That, uh, so a little tricky to deal with. So, Smacks, I agree with you. So hear me out. What if, with all the HP stackers... You don't go for Duskblade or any of the uh, items you mentioned. Holy you, oh well, that 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 works. We're just not going to. That's gonna, a solution. We're, <laughs> 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 you know, my solution was actually going down the Leandri's Torment path. Uh, Leandri's ah, yeah, Torment Mythic. One. Yeah, because uh, that that works against HP stackers, and the ability power does not go wasted on Ezreal. And of course, you're going to get the uh, damage uh, stacking bonus as well throughout team fights, and you're also getting the ability haste on the mythic passive as well, so it works out. But Serelda's Grudge, just a nice item to just buy right now, because Lord Dominus regards, out, yeah, 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 because <laughs> unfortunately, Lord Dominus regards isn't necessarily the best item on Ezreal, because you don't benefit from crit scaling, but Serelda's Grudge, pretty damn good. Yeah, just, just go ahead and drop 3k real quick on one item and one recall. It's, it's no big deal here for Muffin. Quadra killing man on our screens right here. Elated, oh, no, though. Elated. Uh, elated. I've seen this before. Yeah. This was a... Oh, wait. Uh, there, there's... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Barrack is a giant scion meatball. And Whoa. the teleport is coming in. Wait. Oh, he's oh, just... I guess he's getting just out. A yeah, yeah. fast recall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't want to okay. take any chances. No, oh, respectable. They didn't, they didn't know how much time they had. Oh, hey, hey, Smax, remember what I told you about... Uh, okay, this isn't Baron. I, I got a little excited. I was like, oh, yeah. they're doing it. The two-man Baron. But um, that that can still happen in about 45 seconds. Oh, yeah. Certainly can. They just need to stick around right here and wait. Uh, no, they're not going to do that, of course. But They the can do some other things. Good. They can, Look at yeah. the trees. Yeah, look at some flowers. And then they'll come back and do it. Hey, where'd that duck go? I want to say hi to him. 
Ducky. Hope he's having a good day. On the rift? I certainly am. Me too. We're all having a good day, Smax. I, this is a great day to be watching and commentating some awesome League of Legends action. Grand Finals for California State. Baron has spawned. Sunny Hills High have two pink wards. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, my uh, my vision lied to me. It is a pink ward and a blue uh, blue Scryer's orb. This is true. You uh, might need to brush up on your ward trivia. Oh, we're getting a nice zoom in. Thank you, producers. For... <gasps> there are Moo Moo wards. That's so cute. They're like also that. crying. That's not as cute. Actually, no, that... that... Mm. It's this whole thing, you know? Yeah. If Mumu's not crying, then what is he? Just a regular mummy. Oh. Yeah. By the way, um, shout out to my partner, whose favorite champion in the game is a Mumu. <gasps> Do we get to see Cassidy play a Mumu sometime? I don't think so. Uh, Cassidy does not actually have the game installed. However, they are a big Amumu fan. So, so uh, what you're saying is the best gift would be to do an Amumu cosplay. Ooh, that'd be pretty good. I feel like you could do a low-budget one pretty easy. You just got to get a bunch of toilet paper, maybe <laughs> diet green. <laughs> there and, you go. Uh, you know, um... Hopefully it's, uh, actually, you know what? I think paper towel would work better. So then you can get it water resistant and then yeah, you can yeah, cry yeah. a lot and it wouldn't ruin there the you. costume. There you go. Well, Jenny is going to be facing against the Lated, guiding this Rift Herald into the top side of the map. Barrick has barrier. She should already be here. Oh, I'll check this out. Ooh. The tech, paranoia, teleport, and then he's there. He's onto the back line, but Muffin is able to use the arcane shift over the wall, gets himself the safety, and Jenny cannot close the distance, is able to deal with the threat. And now the rest of the members of Sunny Hills, they have to back away. Soon Chang, he's the only man standing in terms of real damage. It's just a couple of frontliners, but oh. they're already losing a beautiful engage. The stun from NA Wood player finds the front line, and La Quinta are going to be able to walk away safely and take this dragon denying soul. Wow, what a clutch team fight yet again from Muffin dealing so much extra damage, but it's not just him this time. The rest of the team does get to stay alive. They do get to flex their muscles, and they do get to take that Drake. Barrick enters this fight, the Nocturne Ultimate as well, but the Teleport is on time yet again. Get things started off really well. Elated gets to stay alive because he's linking up with NA Wood Player. They have the extra zone control with the Anivia Wall, with the Anivia Glacial Storm. We get to see it yet again. What a stun onto two members in the follow-up from Mona Me. Unfortunately, they do knock away Chun or Sun Cheng, so he does get to survive. However, already done enough damage to take that entire fight and take the dragon to follow up as well. La Quinta are trying to claw their way back into this one. They've already denied that five minute power spike as well. So uh, they have to wait for yet another five minutes, Sunny Hills, to get that soul. I have to say, Smax, I don't know that much French, but in Spanish, I would say that uh, follow up body some flash from Mon Ami was bellissimo. Actually, that might be Italian. I, I think we say buenissimo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. <laughs> In English, you I know mean, what we call that? We call that what? a poggers play. <laughs> that That is true. I, I, I don't He's know if that's... pogging out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I haven't really investigated how much of the Twitch lingo has uh, infiltrated the Spanish language or really any other language. I just know for English, it's now like, it, at this point, Twitch lingo should just be its own language. Yeah, they should teach courses on it. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This might be embarrassing for the two of us, but I'm gonna say it anyway. We are both perfectly fluent in Twitch speak. We use it often. This is, this is true. It and happens. Baron play. No vision on the Baron whatsoever. The lights ah. have been completely turned out, but. The approach from Sunny Hills is enough to deter them from taking the Baron. You don't want to deal with a Nunu who can just literally walk in and eat the Baron away for 980 true damage, combined with that 900 damage smite. Very true. Can't mess with Nunu and Willump. 
They will steal that away from you under your noses. Sneaky, sneaky boys of the new Noon Willem. In fact, they're moving over to this Baron. They have a ton of burn damage on this. Oh my word. That's through Guardian, by the way. Something I didn't actually notice until now, Smax. I don't know why it escaped my escaped my thoughts, but this is a Gale Force Fogmoth. Not Kraken Slayer, no, no extra true damage on hit, but the Gale Force is needed just to be able to bob and weave and dodge any incoming skill shots. Mm -hmm. Namely that Flash Frost from NA Wood Player, the Dark Binding from Jibong as well. Also the Explosive Cask. Yeah. Another interesting thing about this one is that Makinta already have two Serpent's Fangs on deck. It's a lot of extra oh, lethality baby. to deal with the Scion and the Lulu shields. Unfortunately, it does not do anything to spell shields, so Jenny is safe. But, but that Absolute Zero shield also oh, yeah. will be diminished. Forgot they gave that ability a shield. And I'm, a, I'm getting old with this game here, Rafa. Max, don't say that. You're like two years younger than me. If you say uh, you're old, then what am I, a fossil? Um, I can neither confirm nor deny your fossilness. Wait, you're three years younger than me. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> no. But you know, we started playing League at the same time, so our age is our Very age true. is the same, right there. Okay, League age. I'm I'm down. We are brothers on the rift, my friend. Hell yeah. In about 50 seconds, Max, the fifth dragon of the game will spawn. La Quinta were able to deny the Infernal Soul in the last fight. Sunny Hills, though, looking to fight for mid-wave control. Shoving it into this turret. The teleport comes in in the nick of time, though, from NA Wood Player. And that Glacial Storm... Hey, remember when we talked about how, how damn good Glacial Storm is at selling out the game and being able to destroy minion waves? I do remember. And it's true. It's still true in this game right now, as NA Wood Player is putting in a lot of work with that one. It becomes a lot easier uh, for Honey Hill to deal with if they can crack this mid turret, but they haven't been able to do so quite yet. There's just a lot of safe wave clear with Anivia and Ezreal in the ring. Both of them have blue buff, if I saw that correctly. Uh, just, uh, just expired, actually. So, not anymore, but Drake is up. Nocturnal is here. Lights have been turned out once again. Barrack trying to charge up a decimating smash, and they just need to be able to buy time oh. to make sure that they can't get in for the steal. Jenny has uh, taken out Elated, and Infernal Soul has been picked up for Sunny Hills and a whip player trying to find an angle to be able to affect the back line. And walks up and look at Soon Chang is able to fight forward, oh. flashing over the Flash Frost, and it's just going to run down the bird. Stopwatches pop. Look at but Muffin. Only to deny the inevitable, but Soon Chang, just literally sliver of health would be enough to take him down, but it's not enough. Shut down for Soon Chang. But oh. Muffin has been quietly picking up kills on the other side of the fight. It's a double for Jabong. La Quinta still surviving two against one. Soon Chang barely making it out alive. Muffin is yet again unkillable in these fights, Rafa. He's just playing on the outskirts of it. We get to watch this replay from Elated's perspective because he was actually completely one-shot by Jenny at the start of this one. We didn't get to see it because of all the madness happening in the Drake pit, but look at that. Jenny starts this off so, so well, but even still, it's still a one fight for La Quinta. Muffin is completely untouched. He's still pumping out oh, so, Max, so we much damage. Oh, we might have to go back to the picture and picture. Whoa! They started up the Baron. They're able to finish it out. Muffin still has Flash. They're trying to deter away from Barrack, but the hair comes He's over out. the wall. Jenny doesn't have Flash to be able to follow over with the Paranoia. Muffin is out. But Jabong will fall. Oh my Ooh. god, Snipes coming in from downtown. Soon Chang picks up two. He's able to deny Baron away from two members. And a wood player Muffin and Monami still have the Baron buff for themselves. La Quinta, once again, are going to have to fight through. A team with a soul on their hands. The Elder Dragon will be coming up in four minutes, but check this out once again, Smack. Yes. The Drake soul is pretty huge. Barak tries to come in and deny the Baron, but does not have Smite. He is actually swapped over to the Ignite instead. I do not believe that he had that capability there. We're seeing just how much damage this Infernal Soul is going to be dealing in this game, though. Double kill for Elated. Sunchang's way over in the river. By the way, this is a ton of range coming through from Kog'Maw. He did go for the same build as last time we saw it. 
Nivori Quick Blades giving him all the uptime he could possibly want for the W. And that might just be enough for Kog'Maw to actually rival the damage that Muffin's been able to pump out. This is a huge, huge buff to have in a game like this where a lot of these fights have come down to Poke Wars from Ezreal and Anivia on one side and from Kog'Maw Lulu on the other. Infernal Drake Soul is a gigantic move to have at your disposal, but you give over the Baron. That inhibitor turret is looking mighty juicy right here. There's a snowball oh. though. It gets stopped. A soft ball oh. onslaught. Negated by the black shield. Great timing from Javon. To protect NA Wood Player from certain death. I don't know if they have the the egg passive still up after the last fight in that dragon pit. With this Baron, they're trying to siege down onto this turret. And that Nivio all was so clutch there, denying that engage. Black Shield saves the knockup. Eric, half HP. Jenny trying to oh. fight the force the fight forward. Soon Chain gets stunned up with the Flash Frost. But this is a beautiful wild growth and we'll be able to buy enough time. Look at the damage though. Sitting right on top of the Glacial Storm has to walk out. And a web player being able to still deal with Barrack was already gone down. A recall is coming in, but and a web player does have teleport. It's three on four. I don't know if they really want to try and take their chances with ending the game. Oh my god, they're, they're actually teleporting in, oh. but Cal Cavalier just takes out Elated. It's still a three on three, but the confidence will keep that they want to end this game. The flat front, the dark binding lands on the Sun Chang. That's the only damage member left. Oh my god, have they done it? La Quinta, it's only 12 seconds left on the Jenny. They're trying to tank up onto the turns because the minion isn't there. And a wood player has fallen though. Jeff Bong and Muffin, do they want to take their chances? Do they have enough time? One second left on the clock. Paranoia from Jenny has activated. It will find oh. Muffin, but does he have enough damage? Oh. oh my god, Muffin with the ace, but Barrick is now up. There's no way they can close out the game. It's a giant metal tank, Saint Zion. He has to be able to defend it. This is for Sunny Hills, but they're going to try to do it. One is down. Barrack has been able to take out Buffin. Decimating Smash lands. A couple more auto attacks should be able to do the trick. But Barrack flashes forward. But the teleport. teleport is now coming up for Belated. Laquita want to end the game right here, right now. Oh! And they do it. Laquita are your California play versus high school champions. Oh, Rafa, how can we still keep getting all these hype games? This is nine games in a row in three Holy days. Holy crap! La Quinta. Oh! We, we gotta watch that one again, <laughs> Rafa. We need to see that one again because that was this close to be a successful base defense. There are so many little moments in this fight. We might have to watch it like seven times, but we're gonna have to do that later. Gotta, we gotta talk about the end of this fight. Look how low Soon Chang gets. Look at that. He has two HP. Oh, I'm. Cool down, Rafa. We got this. I, oh my God, this 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 was such a nail biter. I I I didn't think that they they could have done this, but this beautiful. Huge. Flash Frost from NA Wood Player. The follow up from Jabon with the Flash Dark Binding. As soon as Kogma is down, this is where La Quinta is saying we can end the game, but HP bars are so low. But if they're able to knock down this Nexus turret, they knew that Elated still had teleport available. And then it was just up to Jenny. The fact that Muffin Man. is able to actually win that 1v1 is huge. Dodges out of this queue as well. Predicts it, even. They just barely have enough damage. Bong buffers the queue at the end there, making sure that Barrack is delayed for just one more auto attack and the super minion wailing away. And Elated finishes the job. Lakita have done it. They cut off the reverse sweep potential. They won against the team with Infernal Soul. That does not happen very often, Rafa, but they've they done have, it in the last game. They have upset the script. It has been just reverse sweeps for the past play versus finals that we saw throughout this week's.
but La Quinta have taken down the defending champions in super... Oh, oh my gosh, I... Oh my gosh, in super high fashion against Sunny Hills High. Man, I'm... Each of these finals are getting just better and better, Smacks. And I know we still have a few more days of finals to be able to go through, but congratulations to La Quinta High School. You are the champions of California. Take it that in with pride. Congratulations once again. And for the rest of the Play versus Family, we'll see you tomorrow for more action starting at 3 p.m. Eastern time this time around. So hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.